Yeah, that absolutely sucked, mate. I've never, I haven't really spoken about it that much. Straight out the left. Today, I get to speak with a humble giant, a man who is on the chase to become one of the world's strongest to ever do it. A fellow Welshman who is now being recognized as a potential prospect to becoming the world's strongest man. We have a lot in common and a lot in connection with our upbringing in Wales, competitive rugby, boxing, and athleticism. And we talk about the haunting life events along with his incredible accomplishments so ultimately drove him to win both the Wales Strongest Man title along with the UK's Strongest Man title two years in a row. Here's an episode with a man they call the Bull, Gavin Bilton. Straight up the lad, joined today by a fellow Welshman, Gavin Bilton, the Bull, the Welsh Bull. Welcome. How's it, how's it going? There? Straight up the lad, my friend. Oh, this is amazing. Thank you very much. Great yeah. setup. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. We we uh, we actually done it just for you, to be honest. I thought so. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we are in Vegas, my home stomping ground. Yeah. Um, you're on a, a little vacation with the missus, right? Yeah, come across seven days. Um, just have a little break. Nice. We've been here twice before, so this is the third time. Once for the honeymoon. That's the only thing I picked at the wedding as well, mine. So, um, yeah, then once again, just, you know, as a holiday, we like this place. So, yeah. Well, Vegas has got, um, yeah. you know, great connection to, I mean, this, the, you know, the, the land of sports here. We've got, yeah. you know, it's H- HQ for UFC, boxing. Yeah. And potentially in the future, maybe a strongman event. Well, someone mentioned that the other day, and I uh, went for some food in one of the hotels. I actually talked to the wife about it. I said, why didn't, they, why didn't someone bring someone out here? I know. These people would love it. The people in Vegas would absolutely love it because it's, you've watched the strongman show, you've been to the world's strongest man. Uh, it is intense. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I just think, why not? And I that, someone would snap it up if you did it out here. Yeah, yeah. Well, the weather, the tourism, I think everything has got such an appeal to Vegas. Obviously, like you said, you've been here before yeah. um, on your honeymoon and now you're here okay. on, on a vacation. You said this the first time in, in four years since since you've been and taken any vacation because of all the, yeah. everything that's gone on, right? Yeah, well, I think everyone had their ass kicked when the virus landed. Mm-hmm. And I think I, like myself, you know, myself and like a lot of people thought that it'd be blown away in a few weeks, but uh, four years later, we're still you know seeing the effects of it and we couldn't travel. Jam with the wife... Um, my wife is a nurse. She works in A and E, the Gwent. So, yeah, everyone got hit hard, but um, the NHS got absolutely rocked. So, mm-hmm. we haven't been able to have a break at all. And I just thought when everything started clearing up, and I compete a lot as well. You know, it's like flex. It's uh, it becomes your life, and you can't take any time away. You can't go out for food. You can't drink or nothing. So, when there was a little small gap, I said, "Let's go back to Vegas." And mm-hmm. I thought, just the people out here are amazing. Uh, so happy. You don't get that back. Wales are lovely, and the little village I live in is great, but. Everyone's so happy and I just love that positivity. That's how I try and, you know, run my life is just be positive and everywhere you just go with this just happy people, so and the weather's not too bad either. The weather is great. Obviously I, I've made that move myself, you know, not to you know, twist the arm, but there's you know, a little Welsh Welsh piece of home here in Las Vegas for you when you're ready to make that jump, mate. But nonetheless, yeah. you know, I think that you um, I'm in a, a, a great position right now. Obviously, I, I want to get into the nitty gritty. And for everybody who is thinking, who the hell do you have on the Couch Flex? I have a lot of different people here. And yeah. I love bringing people on, especially now with the season two, that have very unique stories and have, have truly, you know, conquered, conquered or conquering their sport or X, fill in the gaps, right? Yeah. And you're one of these guys. I would say, um, well, we've seen each other, if I met each other first time in, in Myrtle Beach, the, the world's strongest yeah, man. Yeah. Um, I was blown away by the, the sheer size of you. <laughs> what are you, 6'6"? Six, six, six? What are you? 6'6", six, six, but I'm the shortest of three brothers, mind. Really? There's, I have two brothers who are two t- uh, taller than me, and my sister's like six foot four as well. So I was going to get into the family stuff, yeah, but yeah. but so, wait, you're the, so you're the little bro? Yeah, well, I'm not little no more, but I'm the, <laughs> yeah, I got, Stephen and Michael are both taller than me, yeah. Yeah, so, so, yeah. um, is anybody else interested in a strong man in your family, or you're the, the black sheep? Just, I'm the only one, mate, yeah. yeah they, they love it. They support me. My father used to watch like, Jeff Capes, yeah. um, and obviously Gary Taylor, the you know, likes of him, Bill Kazmaier, but I'm the only one who does it. So, um, yeah. What are you weighing right now in pounds for the viewers, for the American viewers? I know in stones, but... Yeah, they have to mess it up. What is they? it? Um, just shy of 400. I'm about three 390 something. 390. I'm sure that's right. I'm 170 yeah. odd kilograms. So that's probably what? Just shy of 28 stone. 28 stone, yeah. Yeah, yeah things like 100, 
mid 170s in yeah, kilos. Yeah, it's going to be somewhere around there. I think. See, we yeah. got to tick all the boxes. UK gets the stones. Yeah. yeah Europe yeah. get the kilos, <laughs> and the US now can get the pounds. So, yeah. so you said 400 pounds. Yeah, 400 pounds. Just yeah, give or take. I'm not over that, but. Yeah. Um, I used to be a lot heavier, man. I was going to say, you, this, I've heard this is a slim version for you. Yeah. I don't even say slim, it's a horrible word. You know, well, <laughs> yeah. What the yeah. fuck do I say that? You can't say slim, no, <laughs> no, mate, no, no, no. No, this is a dieted down <laughs> version of you. Yeah, this is the uh, streamlined lean version. I was 33 stone at my heaviest. When I, when I first started, when I, I left the army, I doubled my body weight. I was 100 kilos playing rugby in really good shape. Um, and then for some reason, I just thought it was the way to go. I, mm. bigger was, I think it's because... Like Eddie Hall and Thor and Sh- Brian Shaw, Constantine Janasha, they were just look massive. And the finals in 2017, I think I know, was, you know if people, didn't, I think it was the heaviest mm-hmm. lineup. And I thought it was the way to go. So when I started, I thought let's get heavy, and I I went for it. <laughs> went for it. I, I just yeah. had uh, that information thrown to me. Four hundred and sixty-two pounds, my friend. Yeah, they weighed me like so. You know the kit the, the, when they take to the worlds. I got taken to the boneyard yep. where you test your kit. And Gregor Edmondson texted me and said, come to the yard, we want to weigh you. And I thought everyone had to get weighed. It was just so the kit men could see that I weighed as much as I said I would. And they put me on like come the on. scales like a prize bowl. And it was 467 pounds, yeah. yeah I, was, I was just very, very unhealthy, mate. But I thought it was the way to go. Because yeah. I've never been that strong, but I'm stronger now. And I'm like six stone, five stone like that. And yeah, just it's not a good way to be, mate. So we can go in so many different different directions here. You've mentioned military, you mentioned rugby, you mentioned, you know, health being that big. So since this is kind of the topic and we're coming in hot from the top, your biggest, you said that wasn't beneficial for strong man. Oh, no, mate, this, the sport has evolved so much and I think I started at the end of like the juggernauts. Yeah, there's still some big guys around like myself, but it's, it's not good to be that sport, mate. It's, it, you can't function properly. Statically, I was okay. Then as soon as you asked me to move around, I couldn't do it. I always thought, being in the army for so long, playing rugby for so long, boxing for a bit, I always thought, oh, I'll keep that fitness level. It wasn't the case, mate. It was like as if I had bubblegum stuck to my shoes. I couldn't move. Um, and I was like, oh, never mind. I'll just, I'll just make it the points on another event. But then I was gassed. I didn't have, I was strong, but I couldn't put the power down. Mm. Um, and it took me, it, it took something big to happen. Uh, before I, I had to back off, otherwise it could have been a lot worse. But I couldn't, I couldn't function, mate. I was not a good athlete at all, in so in any walk of life. So I like, struggling to walk upstairs and shit like that, mate. It was bad. So what was the big thing that changed uh, your trajectory on 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 this change? I think most most people know now. I had a heart attack. Yeah, myocardial infarction. So it's where the heart works way too hard, um, and I just give out. I was up in Glasgow doing a show. This was two years ago. Um, I thought I'd rip my pec. There's so much pain, I thought I'd tore my pec off. And my very good friend, Simon Hammett, who I run the gym with, was next to me. Said I looked green. Uh, you run off, got the doctor. And then um, I was blue-lighted to the Golden Jubilee Hospital, and I spent five days in intensive care. They thought it was a mistake. The nurse came to speak to me, because I was 32 at the time. She thought they made a mistake. She thought, I, you know, they've missed out 40 years. Like She's like, you're the youngest patient I've ever worked on on this ward. Wow. And I was the youngest by about 40 years. And she was like, this is a joke. She was straight to the point, and so was the doctor. And he, and he said, your career's over. He said, uh, you're done. Because um, they thought they were going to have to stent. So I went down the following day, angiogram with a cut the artery, you push the tube in, no stent needed. So I was okay. It took me 10 months to recover. Wow. But, but I, cu- I couldn't compete, couldn't do nothing. And then I went through every single test you can think of. We went to go private, so... Mm-hmm. You know, just to not speed up the progress, but yeah, I did it done fast to get competing again. Um, and I, I'm good to go, mate. So I always believe there's a reason. That things happen. I'm, in my mind, it was meant to happen then. It was meant to happen the last show. It was meant to happen when I was at my heaviest. And it, it made me this athlete. And someone asked me before, would you, ever, like, you, know, would you change something? I was like, no, I wouldn't change it. Mm-hmm. Because it's made me this athlete. I mean, I'm, I work harder than I ever have before. Um, I'm grateful that I know that you know, it can be like, it's done like that. If you get what I mean, it's over like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm happy because I didn't have, you know, see my family the way they were and see my wife break down when I was all up. Like, um, yeah, but yeah, it happens, mate. And I'm here. So it's got to be a reason. Mm-hmm. That's be a reason why I'm here. Have you had any long-term consequences from that situation happening? Uh, the scar on the heart. This like scar tissue that will never go or dead cells in the heart. Mm. There's like three patches of it, something like that. The guy was saying, the wife knows a lot more than I do. So every time 
we spoke to a doctor I couldn't <laughs> it's like the uh, Gemma, Gemma knew more than I did mm. and uh, yeah it was hard because they'd say all the technical terms I'm like yeah yeah that's awesome oh, I'll be back in the gym he was like no no you are not so for a long time and it took me yeah 10 months to fully recover and that show you were competing in what was that show at the time what was that the world tour finals so it was to qualify for the world like the following year yeah and two weeks before I collapsed at Europe's Strongest Man, I was carrying, a, you know, doing the car walk. I think over like 460 kilos, so well over a thousand pounds. I just dropped, boom, on the floor. Mm-hmm. And I felt pains in my, like my chest then, but I thought, oh, I was like, just get up, get up off the floor. And I, I thought it was on the ceiling. I, everything was just spinning around, and um, so I had to pull up the show. And then two weeks later, I went to Glasgow, and bang, <laughs> I think I was in a good position. I, I was down to get on the podium as well, and I was like. Um, Doc was like, you ain't going nowhere, mate. <laughs> they put all this stuff on me, sprayed something, injected me with something, I started throwing up, and then he was like, you're having a heart attack right now. I was like, ah, oh, cool. <laughs> and uh, oof, straight to the hospital. What that feel like? Horrible. It's, it's weird. It was just like a numb. I was just like numb. Like it was just, And then I thought someone was squeezing me. They said my jaw was locking up. The vomiting was bad, nosebleeds. It was just, uh, I think it was the pressure of the shows as well. I'd done so many shows that year. I think I was on like 12 or 13 wow, shows. That's a lot of shows, Gav. <sighs> I was just trying to, I was just trying to, um, if I look back, it wasn't good, mate. Like yeah. my body took a hammering. Like couldn't eat properly because just my body wasn't responding to training. Couldn't sleep. Terrible moves all the time. And then, yeah, I got my I got my ass whooped, mate. But it made me a better man. It made me a better athlete. And um, and when I talk, I don't know mind talking about it, but yeah, I think you have to go through certain things in life to to mold you into who you're supposed to be. And I think going through, you know, you you were going through stuff as well. You know, you have, and it just makes you that maybe a little bit harder. Um, and just directs you. It's, it was meant to happen. I know yeah. I keep saying it, but I always believe there's a path. There's something laid out for you, and you never make the wrong decision. You mm-hmm. always make the right decision, if that makes sense. You might think it's wrong at the time, but when you've got something that you want to get done, like I believe I'll be the world's strongest man. Um, so it was directing me towards that. So it was meant to happen. So with that, with that happening, the brakes were hit. Oh. You're in hospital, you've gone from being, you know, a mountain of a man strength to now being bedridden, can't do this, doctor oh. being saying you can't get back to the gym. Take take us, the viewers, back to to what it was like to get back when you got cleared for the first time. I was, it, the road was hard, man. Like, I didn't know, when I got told, two different doctors told me as well, mind, I couldn't do it. So the surgeon said, you're lucky we didn't need to do surgery. And there was a doctor down in Swansea, Santa Maria, said you'd done. He was like, he didn't really understand the sport himself. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. Just being a larger athlete, things are going to be larger. Um, and he said you're done. So I was like, oh, I'll just join the army up. So I spoke to a different doctor. He was like, you'll never be able to join up again, mate. It's because like, of the damage to your heart. So I was like, um, and for the first eight weeks, I couldn't do anything. And I mean anything. Couldn't carry anything less, more than five kilos in case it burst the stitch oh, in there shit. and strained the heart. Yeah, and she's like, you won't even know you burst out until you pass out, and then you're done. Like, because the stitching was like so small. But if you pop that artery, you said just game over. I was like, I better believe I know your your, your wife Gem was on on your butt about that, man. Yeah, but you know, I was she'd like, being a nurse. Yeah, it's 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 kind of like a double edged sword because I try and just like ah, oh, maybe it's the military training where I'm just like I don't need that. I'm okay. I just man up. That's say a man up. But uh, when it comes down to the heart, mate, um, you can't. So no. for those, those ten months was hard. But then when I was back in the gym and I was giving the all clear, it was like. Um, yeah, ball to a red flag. I was balls to the ball, hitting it hard, and yeah, bust my ass to get back there. And I think, uh, and then my first, I missed two Britain's strongest men due to the, in, you know, I call it an injury. Um, and then when I hit my first Britain's strongest man, I came second, and that was the beginning of this year. Yeah, yeah. So how, how many? How, how long is the duration from you having that heart problem to to you jumping on to a competitive scene? It was ten, 10 months. Just ten months. Seven. Yeah, and then because the way the co- the world was working with COVID, yeah, Britain's strongest man was like, like within ten months. It wasn't a year. Okay. So like it was like the shortest reign of Britain's strongest man, if that makes sense, because yeah. they, they did it at the end and then it was at the beginning. But I missed both due to me being. I was just sat in like you know the Americans. I was just sat in the bleachers waiting for it. And then when I was like, you're good to go. I was like, oh, now you're gonna get it. And Adam Bishop won. Yeah, he was in great shape. But I was like, that's not too bad. My first Britain's strongest man, and then. He's two times champion, and I beat Graham Hicks, who was, you know, a former yeah. champion himself. But uh, and then it just went on from there. A great show at the Worlds um, last year and this year. Just narrowly missing the finals, but yeah, it was great to to get back in the gym and to lift. It is my life at the moment. It's my life. It just is taking over everything. So when I was given the all clear to go back, I was like, yeah, oh, it was great. The, those sessions were brutal. Um, 
I was just, there's just so much energy. I had so much energy and the weight was coming down. I worked with a good guy now who's helping me with my diet and Dale, my coach, was all over me changing things up and oh, it was just such a relief for me to get back in the gym. So so the big change is from what I'm hearing is diet change? Diet, mate. Tra- like, yeah. Any training changes or anything like that because of the situation, supplement changes? Yeah, it was just like the diet was the worst, mate. I was just, I was just being an absolute pig. Like, yeah. I thought bigger was better. So of I was course. like... Having like steaks in the morning, but then having like twelve egg omelet, like like two hours later, then I'd go and have a Greg's. They want to understand what a Greg's is, yeah, like I mean, oh, bro, come on! I just done a post yesterday about Greg's custard slices. What yeah. are you bringing that up to me now for? <laughs> All these people watching this have no clue what Greg's is. It's like I might I might give to these these uh, amazing people that uh, helping yeah. me with the production um, a future to the UK. You have to, and yeah. I'll take them to Greg's. And yeah, this is, I need this a Greg's sponsorship. Straight on air, brought to you by Greg's. That'd be amazing. <laughs> I would definitely move no, out no, here. Nobody would be like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> Anyways, so, yeah. so let's, talk, let's talk about the diet, and I don't want to go all over the place, but you just blew my mind. So breakfast, what was it, a, a, the biggest you've been? What was a breakfast, and what was the consistent, uh, uh, your day in, 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 in a big day of eating? So, yeah, when I was at my heaviest, yeah. I would get up, and it would be, I'd, this is genuine, you know, minimum 12 egg omelette, and then like four pieces of toast, loads of cheese, I cook it with butter, um, put some like, you know, onions in, some peppers, and then this is, <laughs> it would be like I go to Spoons, where the Spoons, because yeah. when I lived in Caffili, there was one at the top of the road. I just walk up there and have the large breakfast. So that's, it stopped serving at 11 o'clock. So I'd have that about nine, wait till 11, go and have that. And this is, this is genuine. My wife was, I would go outside and throw up. Yeah, I just throw up, I'd find a little corner. She, she was there, she'll tell you. I'm like, I'll go and have food in like two. And I have a Greg's then. I get Greg's on the way down, walk back around to my house, and I'd eat that then about one o'clock. Try and train, and I'd be like, oh, why am I so bloated? And I'd lift this, and I'd just be one rep max and everything. And then lunch would be a whole pack of mints, like 500 grams, half a kilo, <laughs> and then, like, a pack of rice. And then, like, bolognese sauce, and that'd be, like, one meal huge, and then I'd have, like, a pasta dish before I go to bed. But there'd be, like, snacks in between. I'd have protein okay. bars, protein shakes, bits of fruit. And I'd be like, oh, I'm eating fruit. It's okay. And then Glam Moss is, like, a bakery in Caffili, and I'd have, like, things like these massive Subway rolls they do there. It's just, it's just a mess, mate. So yeah. how many calories do you think you're eating a day? Oh. I would say at your biggest, ten thousand easy plus, plus e- e- like minimum ten thousand, and anything up is I wouldn't say a bonus, but I was just eating and eating and eating. I doubled my body weight in a year. I would put yeah. on like almost just shy of a hundred kilos in a year. Your transformation when You've the seen photos, photos. Sword, it's I, I blown yeah. me away, and we'll we'll overlay some of these photos, um, li- you know, during this episode. But you truly have uh, transformed yourself. I think yeah, yeah, I, yeah. There's a photo of your on your WhatsApp of you and Gemma. Everyone says they don't recognize it. Like, I'm like, who? Yeah. <laughs> Novikov messaged me. I was like, is this you? I was like, yes. But he was like, no, it isn't. I only recognize Jim. I was like, that's in Las Vegas, mind. I know it yeah, is. Yeah, I yeah. can see the background. And, I, and when you messaged me, I was like, who the fuck is this guy? No beard. <laughs> no sexy stash. No stash. No, like. no mullet and, 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 you know. Massive head. <laughs> no sunglasses, pit viper, or whatever it is you got on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, man, it's a different guy. But again, people don't realize to... To get big, you have to eat big. But obviously, if it's you have the appetite, yeah, it, it's it's a convenience. But also, to have an appetite and try to diet is horrible. So know yeah. where we are right now and what you do and what your daily day and, oh, and, man. and so much better. Like um, still, it's still the same sort of thing with like mince and rice or ground beef they call it over here. Um, but it's a lot more structured, mate. Like the this is, I'll never be as like you were like savagely t- ripped. You know, you're a monster, man. But like it's the small meals in the sense that it's like almost bodybuild style. I'm just like like a pack of mints now. It's three meals. Mm-hmm. I'll have that with like um, some just like like a pit of bread, and then like the snack will be like apples with nuts and an orange juice. And then it's like before the gym, it'll be like bagels with a bit of jam or peanut butter jelly. They call it over here. Um, and that's and there's like more fish, more rice, more potatoes. But it's not just a packet rice. It's like cooked in a slow cooker. It's just a little bit healthier things like that. But make this like the omelets are like. Or egg omelets. That's all. Uh, and Diesel's like, do not go. He's like, Diesel, Simon, he does nutrition for um, Terry Holland's. Okay. Um, awesome guy. He trains yeah. with Adam Bishop, does his nutrition. I met him in a show in Holland. I knew who he was. And now who, that's who I work with. Um, and when I told him what I was eating, he's like, bro, he's like, you were lucky to survive that heart attack. And then, but it's just like, everyone goes, oh, dieting's easy. It's, like, it's not. Because I, like you said, I got the appetite. So when I like see the food, I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to eat it. Um, like, but where we live now, I can't get near a Greg's or a Subway. Like it's like we're in the country, sort of thing. We can't okay. get near them, so 
I think that's why we bought the house. Jim was like, <laughs> "Can't be getting fat no more, Gav." <laughs> yeah, let's, let's let's keep away from uh, yeah. fr- from the, the the stores. But no, listen, you, you've you've done a tremendous job of obviously coming down and yeah. the, the the health benefits. Obviously, you were chasing, but now the physical benefits that now you're seeing in your training. Yeah. What are the kind of things that you've seen now in in your day to day movements, and and oh. how, how much stronger are you from losing? You know, oh, what, what how much have you lost? Six stone. Oh, six so, stone. So I mean, I have to work that out. But six times twelve. Yeah. As you, we'll we'll get that math going. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll come back to you with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Seventy two. Seventy two. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a lot, mate. And it just it's just the fact that this is no joke. Like I would walk around the streets and all. Like, well, not just walk around the streets. Like go to the barber shop, go see my dad, and my back would just blow out, and I just mm-hmm. couldn't walk, and I'd be sat down on people's walls, trying to just go and get a coffee from the shop, or go and see my dad, or say we go. Yeah, when I came to Vegas the second time, I was very, very heavy. Couldn't couldn't walk like down the strip or nothing. I'd have, I'd be sat down and uh, up the stairs blowing, and I'd be sat there breathing like a pig. So like if I was, I'd be like, <sighs> and my sister would be like, "What are you doing? Like why are you breathing like an like some sort of man bear pig?" But then training, full of energy, mate. I like I actually enjoy the conditioning. When I was first yeah. doing it, I wouldn't do no conditioning. I'd be like, "Oh, we can stuff. I can't be asked." Mm. Just because I was just so heavy, just becoming like a walrus. But um. Yeah, full of beans, mate. And I'm ten times stronger than the man I was. I mean, literally, I would whoop my ass from like three years ago. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I feel great, mate. And I'm te- like I said, I'm just stronger, fitter, enjoying training, and everything's getting better. Like it would, it wouldn't have worked out if I had another heart attack. Something else would have happened, like a stroke or something. I don't know. But I feel great in the gym, mate. I'm like, sometimes I wouldn't train for like two, three days because I just couldn't be asked when I was at my heaviest because I was so lazy. You know what I mean, it's just like. An effort to just get my ass up off a sofa at 200 kilos is hard. Yeah. If you get something, if someone didn't know, understand the weight, like check a 200, or like get their body weight to 200 kilos by putting us some sort of like weighted suit on mm. and just like stroll around for a day. And that's why I was just like just shit in the gym. Yeah. And then performance at show were crap. Even though I looked the parks, I was so big, like, oh, he's going to be a monster. I couldn't couldn't put nothing down. So wh- where were you mentally during them days? Just uh, not good, mate. Like I just didn't have no drive. Trying to give off persona when anyone talked to me how positive I am, but it was just an act because I was like, "What's wrong with me?" But I thought I was thought I was doing the right thing by being this big. I was like, "Oh, I must be strong. I'm stronger than everyone I'm bumping into." And I get the wheels. I'm like, "Oh, they just got more on me. They just got years of experience." And then mentally, I was just like, "Can't be asked. This is this this is shit." Mm. I was like, "What?" And I was like, talking to Luke Stockman about it, and then just because he went, to, you know, the things he went through, he to talk about then and chat to him. He's a great guy, and then love him, guys. Yeah, oh, amazing. But, like, I just couldn't seem to get up for anything. Because like, I thought I was doing the right thing. I was like, why are these guys beating me? I'm bigger than them. I'm like, I'm the biggest guy in the room. I'm six for six, 200 kilos. I should be whooping these guys. So mentally, you just get, you're just on your ass. And you just can't be arsed. You get into shows purely just because they're a Giants live show. You take an invite because they're a Giants live show. And you're going there, you're coming dead last. It's, it's not about taking part. I, I know, you know, it is in a way, but let's be real. We come to win. Yeah. Uh, everyone comes to win. And... I was just sat last so many shows like when I first started. I was like, "What's going on? Why, why am I doing this?" But then I realized because being that big was no good, and it, it does it does mess you up, mate. Because yeah. I was training hard when I was hit the gym, and but I was like, "I can't. Put, why can't I do like performer shows?" It's because I was so heavy. You can't do anything, mate. This just doesn't make sense. You know, it just it defeats the purpose of being that big, and you can't use it. So now I'm like that, and now I'm I'm pretty good. I like you know don't. Don't like the blow my own trumpet or anything like that, but I'm, I'm not too bad, mate. Now, now I've dropped the weight, and my mindset now is razor sharp. I, I believe I will be the world's strongest man. The year I make the finals, I get pumped talking about it. I will, I will hit the final, and, and I love him, guys. Yeah, yeah, we're all we're all friendly. You imagine backstage, you're all like sort of patty patty again on the stage. You're a different person, mate. So oh, I, I think everybody knows how I was <laughs> backstage. <laughs> yeah. There was the Welsh humility that goes along with the day to day, but then when yeah. I was there backstage on show day. Yeah. I was the alter ego. That's you, the way I tell people. You, you have to be, mate, yeah. And and that being said, I know that obviously coming from the same neck of the woods, you know, we, mm. we march with that same humility and, and yeah. wearing our hat, right? But there comes a point where you kind of have to have that um, very vocal confidence. It's not cockiness. No, no. It, it's a vocal confidence. It's yeah. kind of like law of attraction, right? You're putting it out there, and you're also putting service to, to the people you're yeah. going to be standing against, right? Yeah. And, and if you went in and you were kind of like, oh, you know, uh, I'd like to play as well next to you. It's like, no, I'm coming to win. And yeah. the things that you've been talking about now and 
obviously myself uh, being around the World's Strongest Man events this this year and, and, and linking in with certain athletes, it seems like being good at one event is so old school. You have to be consistent. And you could pick up points in, in, in one event, maybe one in a, win another, come yeah. third in another. But ultimately, the road to victory is being consistent yeah. in every single event. And one of the things for yourself... Um, that I've I've seen and the fans are talking about, you've become more and more consistent across the board, and I think that's a, a testament to you. You know, doing all these little small, thank you, macro, yes. micro, and also big movements, especially yeah. with your weight loss and stuff yeah. like that. Because listen, it's it's you realize now, that being around the world's best, myself can you know attest to this. Come to this country and I've stood next to some of these guys and like they're not that far ahead of me. And now you can attest and say the same thing. You've stood against the best. You've yeah. outlifted some of the best. Yeah. And now things are starting to come uh, and align themselves. And, you know, me going to the world's strongest man this year and not being able to see you lifted that finals, I'm not going to lie, it was gutting. Obviously, for yeah. you, it was a little more gutting yeah. than yeah. for me. Yeah. But I was very excited because the hype going into this year's strong with this year's strongest man had a Welsh man being talked about. Yeah, it was and, awesome. And and the, to hear your name in that mix of athletes and then to get to meet each other for the first time. We yeah. spoke obviously through Instagram and yeah, stuff, yeah. but uh, to, to get to meet you for the first time and then shake your hand and obviously my upbringing at Gary Taylor as the yeah. guy. Now, young guys are looking up to Gav, big yeah, Gav from the Philly. And, yeah. and you are... You are their version of Gary Taylor. Oh. And now with people saying this guy has all the potential of the world's strongest man, that's got to feel good, Gav. Yeah, um, it's crazy because I am a positive person. Right? Um, you only have to spend a day in the gym with me and uh, I try and uplift everybody. Right, And I'm always a guy with a smile on my face. But for some reason, I won't ever talk about myself like that. And it's, it's amazing, mate. Like I had goosebumps and you talking about it like that. Like... We haven't had a Welsh champion for 1993, and he was an absolute animal. Like, like even if you dropped him in now, he would be a champion now. He was a he was well before his time. The same as like Big Z, you'd put him in any year of strong, and, and you, it's game over. I yeah. think Tom's going to be the next sort of thing like that. But to hear someone like that, it is cool. I get certain messages, and people say certain things. But and Gemma always says, "I wish you could see yourself through my eyes." Because I'm like, I'm just okay. But then when I get to the show, I'm like, I'm going to empty you. That's yeah. what like. The mindset changed, uh, like when I had the heart attack. Certain things were said about me, and I was like, "Nah, I, that, this isn't me." Like, if I played rugby, I would, I would come and take your head off. It would be a late or early shot. I would get one in on you. Mm. Um, so I brought that edge because I spoke to a guy, Ben Pasco, in the gym. Brilliant guy. He went to his wedding a few weeks ago, and he is like always like not positive. It doesn't we in the, my gym? It doesn't. It's not like uh, everyone's blowing smoke up your ass. It's like if you if you're shit, they're like hey, you need to sort this out, mate. Like not in a, you know constructive. Like, oh, you sh you sh but eventually someone's like, don't be shit. You need yeah. to fix this, 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 and then you'll be better. It's like constructive. It's not just said, don't be shit. It's the way we lift it, the way we say it. But Ben always says, mate, it's like, you were, you were one of the best in the world. And I'm like, oh, I'm okay, mate. Yeah. And I, will, I will lift some and then go, is that okay? Like, I pressed yeah. like 190 kilo log in the gym the other day. I was like, is that okay? And I'm like, yeah. And then I took like two boys to move it off the mats to put their log on. I was like, that's not too bad. And, I, and then to hear you say that... Um, it's hard. It was sometimes just to step away and see it, if that makes sense. Like, see what I'm doing because I'm just like, I'm just a guy from Caerphilly lifting weights because I love doing it. Mm -hmm. I support my family with it. I, you know, and um, I, 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 well, you know, I do it for my family. I do it. And I also, yeah, it's cool to leave a bit of a legacy. You That's know what right. I mean? I mean, to be spoken about. Like, we're still talking about Gary Taylor. I mean, he's, you know, he's the world's, he was the world's, strong. and if you look at his, his resume, he won everything. Absolutely everything. He was Incredible. a monster. Um, and only his record was broken, the, you know, the behind the neck press, broken two years ago. No one, no one got close yeah, to it. that's right. That's right. And Novikov did shatter it with a 246, mind, but that's just the evolution of the sport. Gary Taylor could have got more. If you see that press, yeah, that Flintstone press, like 212 is like warm-up weight for him. But if I can get compared to him at this this time right now, that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah. But I still got plenty of years left, and I keep saying it because it's just the way I do. I write it every day. I go in, the, in my gym. Wipe it off my whiteboard, and I write, "I will become the world's strongest man." I do that every single time I train. Mm -hmm. I put my little quote of the week on there as well. But yeah, going back to what you said, that's pretty cool to be like. I just, I, well, I don't know how it feels. I just, I think when I'm done and dusted, then I'll be like, oh, I, was, "I was actually all right." But right now, I'm just like, I think it's keeping yourself, trying to keep myself just low key. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like in my mindset, I'm just like, I'm doing okay. Because some people get like washed up in their own bullshit sometimes. And you, you would have seen it yourself with certain people. Many times. And they just blow up and then they're like, ah, I'm the world's greatest. And all of a sudden it's like, poof, no, you're done, mate. So I'm just like, I'm building. And when I finally lift that trophy, I'll be like, yeah, I am the world's best. And everything they said about me was true. But I'm just like, I don't ever let things get to my head. And but I you, wouldn't. But you believe it though, right? 100%, mate. The year like it, like, it wasn't, it wasn't going to happen last year or this mm. this year, right, with what happened at the Wills. So I just reset and I was like, yeah, I was devastated. You know, in my head, I should have beaten him in the stone off I should have I don't know what went wrong but then I was like no no it was meant to happen mm. like um, if there's anybody to lose to it's nice to lose to a Stolten brother right that's exactly what I said <laughs> I was like so upset in the tent and I was like yeah. you know um, but to lose to a, a Stolten man is not too bad mate. They're, no. they're the world's best mate at the moment I mean I, but I'll throw down with any of them I don't care yeah. Like I, I say oh, they're great but I'm not too bad I mean do you know what I'm hearing I don't know if the viewers are listening to this back home, but I'm hearing a guy who wants to be confident, but his humbleness is un- is cutting the head of the cutting the head of the yeah. sentence because you've already told me you believe in yourself. You already told me that you will be the world's strongest man. Yeah. But then when it comes down to putting it into a different constructed sentences, yeah. you throw the words okay in and you're not okay. And that's that's the thing yeah. that it's a change and, and honestly because coming from a guy from the same part of the world as you yeah. Is changing certain verbiage that yeah, gets you yeah, thinking yeah. daily, just like writing on the board. You saying, "I will become the world's strongest man," so now you got to start changing the words that come out of your mouth. You write, "You're going to be the world's strongest man." You think that you're going to become the world's strongest man. Now you have to verbally start putting it in construction I sentences. I, I don't know what it is, man. I just I, I know what it is, right? It's when I was playing rugby, and this is a bit, not a random story. This is what we're after. There was always an excuse that the, the the coaches wouldn't pick me, and then I was like, I, I, in my head, I was, I'm a good player, and I was like, I, I fucking carry tackle, I do my job well as a second row, and I played, I play some good rugby, I play some great rugby, and then the coaches would drop me, so all we get train, then I get dropped. I think this was when the army was the worst. Yeah, um, I won't mention his name as the coach. Um, fucking oh, name it, Andy Sanger. Yeah, uh, he was a. Never got on with him. So in my head, I was like, I'm a good player. But then every time he'd be like, no, you're not. I'd get yeah. knocked. I'd be on the bench or dropped. So I think I'm afraid to say it in case I let myself down. I think that's what it is. I just, because I, was, I'm a, I, I go in that change room on the on a Monday morning in, in all the shots that's where we used to do that training. And I'm like, I'm going to be on that. I'm going to start against Cambridge. So the Army, we play some amazing teams. Like Oxford and Cambridge, they're outstanding inside. If yeah. you ever watch that varsity game, it's Cr- brutal. Anything, anything, in, in rowing, anything. They, yeah, they take yeah. they take it in their stride. They're amazing. So I was like, I'm going to play on Wednesday night, and then I get dropped. I train, I'd smash the hell out of everyone on Monday. Fitness was good because I was a lot like that. I was a, I was a good soldier. And I was a good rugby player, and then I was like, I'm a good player. They was like, No, you're not. You're not playing. I was like, I was just stuttering. I was like, Why am I not playing? Oh, what is this guy? Is this 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 this? So I think that. What was it? If you don't mind asking. I just didn't get on with the coach, genuinely. That was it. And I would always question shit. So you'd be like, oh, Gav, why do you make that tackle? I'd be like, what about the three before, though? Like, I missed a tackle against Worcester, right? This mm. is genuine. But I smoked two players prior to him, rolled out of the tackle, and then I missed the tackle on the scrum half. He went, he didn't hit the scrum half, Gav. I was like, two tackles before my mate, and he just went back. and went, ah, oh, they, were, they weren't that good, though. I was like, mm. Yeah. So it was always, I just questioned shit. I wouldn't keep my mouth shut in analysis. And my mate, Matty Dwyer, a very good friend of mine, was like, Gav, just take it on the chin. I'm like, no, because. I'm getting dropped for people who I know I shouldn't be getting dropped for. And like they bring players in, I'm like, this sucks. And then I went to uh, Ben Dom to play against the Russian national team, which would have been a capped game. And I got I, I got put on the bench, and I got I didn't get on. So um, that wasn't too good, mate. And then yeah. we had our final words, and that's when I stopped playing. So it pissed you off to stop. Yeah, and then that's why I think it is. That's why I won't say I, I'm good in my head because I think. That some people say no, you're not. And I, like, but there's no coach. I am. Dale's my coach. Mm-hmm. And if I do mess up, he's like, no, no. What we just do is go back and do this. Like he wasn't happy. I missed a thousand pounds. I did a show two weeks prior, which I shouldn't have done. Um, no, three weeks prior, which I shouldn't have done. But um, yeah, but he's not like your shit. He's like you're, you're world class, but and I'm like, oh, I'm all right. But but I just I know. But then when I train, I train like I'm one, I am. I say it now. I am one of the world's best. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm one of the strongest men on this earth. Give me two days, you Gav. You'll have a different mindset, mate. I know that we need to come back at the end of the year. I think, yeah. Um, yeah. I just, but I think it's that because that coach kept saying I wasn't any good. 
So they kept like beating me, and it's like, oh, am I good? So when I do something in the strong man, I'm like, am I okay? Do I, do I look like, I came second the other week in that Cardiff show, and I literally said to the chairman of the wife, I was like, that, was that okay? And she's like, she was crying. She was like, yeah, it was amazing. Mm. Um, second in Britain's the first thing I asked. I was like, was that performance all right? And then I picked it apart the day after. I was like, I should have done this. I should have done that. And Adam Bishop's like two times, you know, you know, champion, and he's world's strongest man finalist. Great deadlifter too, incredible deadlift. Phenomenal, mate. like that's strong yeah. as hell for a size he shouldn't be. But he actually he is huge. He's like one fifty odd, so he is massive. But it's just because his height gets lost and his weight gets lost because he's surrounded by bigger guys. But yeah. like he went on the pitch to give the water to the boys at the Harlequins and dwarfed all the forwards. He was he's a strength and conditioning guy or something. Yeah, he worked for, he worked for him for years. Yeah, mate, yeah, 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 yeah. And he went on the pitch and everyone was like, "Who, who is that? <laughs> Fuck, just bring him on, sign yeah, him. Yeah, just get that guy playing. But he could have played for Wales, but he had um, like the Welsh connections. He could have played for Wales. Yeah, but he chose the wrong man. Great sport. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I had my I had my yeah, rugby days too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So talking about rugby days, um, and and military days, you know, obviously. Very similar upbringing in South Wales for everybody who are, who who is listening doesn't know where Wales is. Shame, shame. <laughs> we are that little country next to England, the one that uh, you know, the big country that none of us can stand. But anyway, that's a subject for another story. Um, but when you got two house guys in the room, we can talk as much shit as possible, especially when you got a guy that size. Like, you? But you were probably when I played rugby before we start talking about the military. Um, you were probably that guy. That I would target on on the field because yeah. I was the smallest. Yeah, you definitely. But yeah. the, the, the biggest mouth, the <laughs> biggest point to prove. And yeah. uh, if I seen somebody of your stature coming on, you know, you're a big guy. We got to get you out of the game fast as we can. Yeah, yeah. So you would be a target in my eyes. I don't know if I'd be able to jump up and punch you, but <laughs> I've, I've, I've I've hit a few guys in my time from flying Superman. Given as good as I've got, got as good as I've given too. It's, it's the only way forward, mate. Yeah. Really done, but yeah. But do you miss? Do you miss the rugby? Oh, mate. Yeah, yeah. It's it's in your blood because we're from yeah. Wales. It's a national sport. And when you see the boys run out in red, I still sit in and think when I watch Wales play. I'm like, oh no, like how far I could have really gone? Because when I was up with Bridgend, I was oh, I mean, I'll say I don't know why I keep doing that. I was good. Mm-hmm. I was in great shape. I sent you, you know, we seen the photo from Newport. Yeah. I was yeah. in about one twenty, like lean, and I was not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not like, like rugby lean, like this like dense. Probably like two two twenties, maybe. Yeah. Two forty. I don't know. What's two? What's two tw- one twenty? He's speaking all this l- 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 lingo of you. I can't even speak English now. Because <laughs> I'm this guy. But you you were playing second row, right? Yeah, second so, row. Yeah. So for everybody who's who's watching and and don't understand rugby, so fast and best analogy is you guys seen the scrum when they come together. Is the front three, and then there's two people behind them front three that push. You got two people on the end. You're the collar flankers. You got the number eight. So Gav was behind the first three. Uh, you got to be a strong boy to push that. Yeah, and I was in the boiler house. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was number five. So that's the locks. That's the position behind the tight head. Yeah, usually they're one of the heaviest players on the pitch. And I think that's a number eight, right? Yeah, number eight is a yeah. monster. You have to have a big number eight. But uh, wait, so somebody who's bigger than you on the team? No, many. When I was okay. with Bridgend, I was the, I was the biggest guy. And like, yeah, there was only a few. Damien Hud from Ebervale. He's a big guy. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I, I miss him. It's like still yeah. to this day, like. Uh, there's a show coming up at Caffili Rugby Ground, and then they joked around and said, "Oh, the deal is we'll let you use the arena, all the stand, if you come back and play for us." And I was like, <laughs> "Not at this weight. I would love to." And I looked at Jem, and I was like, "One game." And she's like, "Absolutely not." Uh, like, she sounds like my wife. Yeah, she's. If I um, mean, you know, I'd uh, I'd be in hell of a shape if I wasn't for her. She yeah. keeps she keeps uh, keeps the reins on me massively. Would you, would you do a charity event if you were definitely. if they asked you? One hundred percent. Yeah, me too. I think yeah. I I would definitely do that. They did a. Um, a few years ago, didn't it? Um, Terry Hollands actually smoked the guy who he's Did like he? he's related to the guy who owns McVitie's or something. Have you ever seen it? No. It's a huge hit, mate. It's when Terry was big. <laughs> Terry, uh, Terry's good rugby player too. Class player, yeah. but really good. But then I think this guy goes to carry him, carry into him off the back of a scrum. Yeah. Terry just folds him. It'd be great. To, like I mean. It's a huge hit. We, we might need some uh, lingo subtitles on this because we've, we've got we've got sorry we've got, we got way off. Lot, we, yeah. we got a lot of American uh, <laughs> like viewers that be like, "What the hell's fold him mean?" He that just, technically means when somebody gets hit, he folds it in half. Yes, yeah, actually um, smokes him. Sorry, yeah, I just went full Welsh. No, 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 it's good, it's good. So, so oh, the, I miss him. The it. rugby day, I miss, oh. I miss it too. I miss the camaraderie. I miss like the banter. I miss all the shit. Yeah. The, 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 do you know all the 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 shit talk that you get. I see that though. I will be honest. I see that in Strongman. Mm. There's there's a lot of different events. Uh, sorry, there's a lot of different sports where there's banter involved and you can, you know, talk some smack with the guys. Um, 
But to be honest with you, I've not seen it in, in any uh, proximity in any of the sports that I'm around. Like UFC, oh. you know, it's not me shit talking, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's building up to a fight. It's selling a ticket. Yeah, yeah. With the strong man, there's banter that goes around. There yeah. might be some chirping away on, on some social media platforms. But yeah. when you get back to the tent or the athletes' uh, I- I- areas, you guys are just laying into each other. You know, you're, yeah. you're helping each other, talking shit. But then there's a serious note that comes yeah, cause right before the events. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's just weird because you don't get that in many of the sports. You wouldn't have someone going backstage in UFC helping the other fighter out. But no. it is the thing. It's because you want the athlete not to have an excuse. Yeah. So you beat them at their best. So if they're like missing a bit of kick, you go, well, I got kit that fits you. Or I got no chalk for the game. Well, I got chalk I can give you, mate. There's like, I got everything that you can have or want, and then you can't make an excuse when I whoop you. So, mm-hmm. and Evan Singleton's quite funny with that sort of stuff, you know, the T Rex. I call him like chicken fingers. It's, <laughs> he's got two chicken fingers tattooed on his hand. It's, 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 you know, he's a funny guy, but he's good for that. He gives yeah. everyone shit backstage. Paro Dwyer is another one. Paddy, yeah. You will, you will never win again. He made the photo. Oh, he out, made it tiny at the Worlds. Yeah, we'll dig that out for the podcast. Oh, my God. He's done that so fast, though, too. What the he, hell's wrong with this he, guy? He wouldn't tell us the app. I was like, tell us what he, He's like, I'm not telling you what the app is. And he was doing it to everybody. But, yeah, uh, he's one for giving people shit. But then it is. You want to help out because you don't want the excuse. Yeah. That they go, oh, but I didn't have my kit. I was like, well, I got kit to give you, mate. So you can put mine on and you can try and, you know, whatever. But. Yeah, it is. I like. I like. Yeah, good but, camaraderie. Yeah, it is. It's really good, mate. Um, someone gets injured. I think um, Evan helped me out when I injured myself at Europe's Strongest Man. Eddie Orr helped me out when I was injured. But I was like vomiting at the show when he opened some curtains. And I ended up throwing up on his shoes and things <laughs> like that. It was. It was bad. He pulled the curtains back and just went all over his trainer. But um, just yeah, you just you gotta help out. It's, it's not that sort of sport where you you was like rugby. Is you know you, you that's what I mean. You the correlation. Like, yeah, it's just like it's, it just goes together nice, man. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so let's wind the clock back now. We've we've kind of talked about a few different things here, but I, I want to get down to the nitty gritty, and, and obviously I want to get into the mindset because this is why we brought you on here. Um, you have lived, you have lived a life, my friend. You know, from from the the, the, the early days of of Caffili, um, a schoolboy, three schools that I read that you were. Yeah. You moved around, and was that because you were a little bit of a naughty boy back in the day, or were you just? Yeah, it was just school wasn't for me. Like, I mean, it's changed a lot now, haven't it, with the way schools are run now? But they just people learn in different ways, mm-hmm. and yeah, it was a bit of a tit. But um, is that why you, you chose the military life? Because I think it was, mate. Yeah, yeah, I had the option. They they gave me the option: yeah. professional rugby, yeah, or professional sport, yeah, or where you're going flex is the military. That's literally what the, the teachers would say to me. They're like, there's only one, only one rule for you, it's going to be the army. And then they don't do it that often now. When I was recruiting for the army at the end, you don't go to schools that often now. It's really? Just, it's crazy, mate. Yeah, maybe on an evening, like an officer or a sergeant will go and sit down with his little thing. But, like, I think the Marines or the Paris came to my school. And I just went, oh, this is awesome. And then I left school when you do. Um, obviously, grades weren't great. But, you know, um, went to college for a bit, became a bricklayer for like a year. And then it's just hard laying bricks. I mean, like, hard. Like, I was like, they don't want this. This is coming from the guy who was lifting and he threw a thousand pounds in the gym, by the that, way. That's it. I, I was laughing about it the other day. I literally spoke with us in the, in, in the gym the other day about how I was a bricklayer and my back would hurt. And then my mate Simon was like, yeah, but look, well, you're deadlifting. I was like, yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, but yeah, did, did bricklaying. Didn't sort of, you know, I really enjoyed it, but oh, I was graft, like, up at five, bed at five, up at five. And I was like, and when it's you're tough. like, when you're um, an apprentice, the money isn't great. Yeah. And, Money is good, you know. When you're young, you want as much as you can. So, and you get like, the shit end of the stick too when you're an apprentice. <laughs> yeah, mate. Like, it was a lot of work for not much money at the end of the week, and I was like, ah, oh, great. But then, I mean, brother got back from Bosnia because he was in the Welsh Guards before me. Um, but the weird thing, the, the first choice was Marines. I went to the Cardiff recruiting office that is just opposite the train station. I want to go Marines, but he was like, and there was a Welsh Guards. Recru- you're not supposed to do it. You're not supposed to sway people. You're supposed to let them join what they meant to join. And because he was a Welsh Guards sergeant, he was like, no, nah, not Marines. He was like, Welsh Guards, and that was it. It took me, I think I was in within like three months, and I was like, holy shit. Like, it was quick. Yeah. Jen was in work, I was like, I'm joining the army. She's like, what? I was like, yeah, I'm off. I'm catching a train to Cardiff, I'm going to join the army. You guys were together? We just met. We hadn't long just met, didn't we? Yeah. And she was like, oh, okay. And then <laughs> two years after I joined, I was I was in Afghan, and she was, it was, it was, wow. It was like, like now the recruiting process is a lot longer. Yeah. I remember going there and they were like ringing me every day. Is, is this date, this date, this date? So I was like, no, 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 no. Like almost second thought in everything. Yeah. But then like, I got like, I had like cousins and all that in the army and my brother was still in and did 13 years. <laughs> I was, I was good. To, uh, my, my plan was four. Mm-hmm. Do four years, um, 
I was like, get a trade. But they, they, they spin you some stuff in that recruiting office. Oh, you can get all the trades you want in the Welsh Guards. I remember getting it. I was like, oh, shit, he lied. <laughs> I know, because yeah. I was going to go into it. <laughs> yeah, I, I know it's their job, but I was recruiting, and you can't you can't do yeah. that now. Like, you get in trouble if you do things like that. Like, if they want to go Navy, you let them go Navy, I suppose. Like, I remember getting off in Catrick. I was like, right, where's all the jigs? I, I was going, like, I wanted, like, engineers and things like that, and Marines. I was like, no, Marines, you can do everything. Like, I can do this and this and this. And then I was like, no, you've lied. And, yeah. I did, I did enjoy it because I met some great blokes. Like I mean, yeah. um, some friends I still hang around with now. Um, so it was, not, it was a great job, probably one of the best jobs. Besides what I'm doing now, it, I, I loved every mo- like. I always say the good times outweigh the bad times, and mm-hmm. everyone's going through the same shit as you. So when I was going through some shit, I was like, "Well, that man is as well." So mm-hmm. I'm all right. Yeah, I loved it. I love the army. It's 13 years. You done two two tours, right? Two tours of Afghan, yeah. Um, and then you also. Um, Served uh, for the Queen's Guard. Yeah, yeah the, the Welsh Guards, that's yeah. what it was, yeah. So now it, I'm pretty sure it's probably called the King, maybe the King's Guards, because, mm-hmm. yeah, what happened, yeah. But yeah, the Queen's Guards, so you got the Household Division, so it's the Scots Guards, uh, Irish Guards, Coldstream Guards, the Grenadier Guards, and then us, the youngest, the, the last to be formed. We were formed in 1915, the start of the First World War, and that's our first battle on us, and yeah. But yeah, we're the youngest of the five household divisions. Yeah. So where were you based to do the Queen's? Uh, the Queen's uh, so Catrick training. Right. So we did like eight months up there in Catrick. It was a lovely place. Catrick never stops raining. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Like, um, and then my first was all the shots. I was posted there for four years. Did my first tour there. I often not you know, went from there. Trained. Got back, and I think we moved from there to Hounslow. Hounslow, a couple of years there, and from Hounslow to Purbright, and that was me done. I, I remember getting back from Romania, working with the army up there for like six weeks, and I was like, I can't do this no more. I did like my first Wales the Strongest Man, came second, and I was like, oh, I'm actually quite good at this. I won my first novice, um, mm. uh, and then won my first, you know, come second at the national show. I was like, I'm actually pretty good at this. They were sort of on site, the Welsh Guards. Mm. If I stayed at that size, I was, because... Yeah, you know, two... There was a photo floating around of me where I got the little axe in my hand. And then, like, yeah, that's amazing if you could say this size for us. And then I went recruiting. So I was in Cardiff for mm-hmm. the last two and a half years. And I didn't stay that size. No. You've, see, you've seen it. Yeah. So they didn't see me for like two years. They wouldn't, like, the Welsh Guards recruiting page wouldn't post anything about me, like, when we were at shows. And then when I went back for a tunic fit in, they were like, so tunics were yeah. way outside Buckingham Palace. It's what we're famous for, the Household Guards, the Household Division. And they were like, wow. I was like, <laughs> I was like okay. And then, like the cut of cloth for the tunic, it was 56 inches or 54 inches. And at the time, it was like 62 inch chest. So the cut of fabric, mm-hmm. I was too wide for it. They couldn't cut the tunic out of it. So um, that's when I started like sort of fall apart from the army and I had to get out because I wanted to become, I was like, I'll become the world's strongest man. But in them 13 years, I want to go back and, and talk about that chapter. Um, obviously, you've got to see things that, you know, oh. us civvies will never see. You know, you've got a, gone around the world and. Obviously, yes, uh, you, you you played and you had a trade whilst you're in the in the army, but nonetheless, um, you get to s- you've got to see things again that that, yeah. that do do they fuel your fire and, and and can you tell us any of the stories of what uh, you experienced? Made. Yeah, um, first tour of Afghan, I think, was reported. It was the worst tour since the invasion. Most casualties, most shots fired, most IEDs blown up, most things. Like, there's a book written about it called Dead Men Risen by Toby Hardin. And he was out there, um, he spoke to us, and most of the stuff he said is in the book and is blacked out. It's genuine. If you buy the book, I don't know if you'll be able to get over here. Um, I'll send you a copy of it. I have a copy of my house. If you, if you want to get amongst it, it's a great book, mate. And there's loads of stuff in there that's blacked out, just like, you know, like, like it's like secret files that boys yeah. were saying. They were just like, no chance. Um, it definitely fuels me because I realise how lucky I am because there's boys coming off our tour. Uh, it sounds horrible to say that they ain't the same anymore, yeah. physically and mentally. Um, in my eyes, um, I just accept them, mate. I, we went through some shit for seven months. So you're in Bastion for about two weeks to acclimatise. You do like a like range packages, get used to the heat, running about with your body armour on. Because you do all that stuff prior to it, but nothing gets you ready for until you land. It's like literally an oven. If you open your oven, oof, that heat you feel, that's that's it for seven months. Mm. It's like breathing through a straw. The dust, the humidity, it's horrible out there, but... Um, so you do two weeks in Bastion or ten days to acclimatise, so you have you know, something to do with your bone marrow and the red blood cells. And then I, we hit the ground and we did seven months of just, like, of like fighting every day. And I mean, 
it wasn't a day go by so a contact is where you get shot at but we call it a contact it wasn't one day went by for seven months I wasn't shot at whether that be ambush RPG or they just come looking for us or we weren't looking for them and I think I got I think there's a mast you know mastiff's a military vehicle I got hit four times in one so RPG the side and then blown up onto the side three times <laughs> And Stephen Rowe, I don't know if he won't be watching this, he was the driver of one, and the bar armor, I think, flew. Just So the bar armor's on the side to catch RPGs. If you, You'd be able to find a photo of a master. They're huge vehicles, and they have bar armor, so it's like on the side of the vehicle, and they just wedge RPGs in the side. This is genuine. I, I, I don't know where he is now. He's still around. He's not dead. And they were, we got back to camp, and there was an RPG stuck in the side of the vehicle. This is genuine. Just like, poof. So he hadn't gone off, and it stopped it from connecting. Like that, and then we got back, and then it was like, and then we got hit a few weeks later. I don't know why I'm laughing. Thing flipped on the side, and then a piece of bar armor flew off, and we found like 300 meters just wedged into a wall on patrol. About two weeks later, I was just like, oh, there's, there's the yeah, bar armor. There's the bar armor off the side of the Mastiff. Um, it's crazy out there, mate. There's other stories I've never ever, I've never spoken about it. This is genuine. That, like, that little thing with the RPG, I, most people know that. The bar armor, I tell that joke around, joke around that in the gym, but I've never spoken about what we went through. I, I, I think maybe it's my way of processing it because yeah, I mean, it changed me. It did definitely change me. What what you've seen on, on them tours and, and obviously I'm I'm sure you you lost some friends too as yeah. as have I. Yep. Um, how, how much does that kind of circle back in any of your strongman training? Every day, I will literally go in and be like, it, I it's like I, it's a privilege to train. Privilege what I do. And like I was watching the Strickland podcast about how hard people's lives, people think their lives are, where he said it's the hardest part of your day is going for a coffee in Starbucks. I get it, right? It's, it's like, uh, uh, what do you call it? Let's like just prospect, you know, hard, oh, hard life. Okay, no, it can be a lot worse. So them seven months, every single day I train, I'm like, like there's, I, I have one thing I think about before I go heavy. I've never spoken, but the wife doesn't know, my father, nobody knows what, about, what I think about. But if you watch some of my videos, I usually cut it before it, I go in and I catch at the deadlift. Last week at the deadlift, sort of caught it. I just talk to myself. I say certain things, and then it's one thought I think of, and that's exactly what I think. And so, yeah, it, it, everything that I went through up there it was uh, there's a reason why I came through unscathed. And yeah, okay, it might, and I don't like, like I've never been tested for certain things like PTSD. I don't. I, I just, I just, I just accept what we went through. Accept that we had to do it to get home. It's as simple as that. It might sound ruthless, but um, so when I train, that it fuels it. I mean, like. Yeah, I get pumped talking about it. My heart's racing now because I just want. I, 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 yeah, I love it. I'm, I did I enjoy it. There? I loved it up there as well, mate. So when I train, I let loose like like I am nothing. I, this happy jolly gab disappears, and I lift and I lift. I won't talk. I, I barely bat an eyelid to anybody. Mm. I'm just like that. Lift is mine, and um, yeah, I bring I bring out bring out the shows. Yeah. When I when I go for it, I go. I, I will go hard. And because be like, it's because I think the job made me like yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Me- mentally, it's it's tough to get into a big lift without using emotion. You have to, mate. I think like you see guys fail and see girls fail because they're just all like, oh, I'm like nah. I, I'm I'm an emotional lifter. Yeah, like I, I will cry before a lift, but I don't mean to do it. Yeah. I am just so like, <laughs> yeah. It means at the moment this is my life. Um, and I will do anything. I will bleed. I will cry or sweat blood. And so that's why I'm super emotional when I left. Yeah, Not all the time because it, it will drain you. You see it? Yeah, yeah you, that's right. It will drain you physically and mentally. Like I, If I do a massive lift, I'm like, I'm having tomorrow off because I will get nothing out of this session. I have one one day off when I do like nothing, stay in the house. Most of the time I'm down the gym, I'll stretch off, I'll do something. I'm doing something. There's like probably a Wednesday because I've done something Monday, Tuesday. I'm like, Phew. I will get, and then I have a heavy squat or heavy stones or heavy yoke. I'm burning myself out. So I'm like, I'm going to save myself because otherwise there's nothing out of this session. Because, yeah, otherwise the smartest, the, the, the strongest of the smartest, you yeah. know yourself, if you're smart with your training, you will, Brian Shaw, blueprint of what a strongman should be, he is super intelligent, super smart with his training. Um, yeah, but the, going back to the Afghan thing, it fuels me every day, mate. Yeah, not, not in a mental way. I don't mean, so, I don't mean to say that word, but not in a bad way, but it does, mate. Because I'm like, all the shit we went through, it must be a reason why I'm still here. Mm. And I found what, what I'm good at. I love this sport. And no one's telling me I'm shit in the sense that no, the coach is not going, you're crap, Gav, so you're not playing. So I'm like, if I don't lift something, it's on me. It's yeah. an, an honest sport, mate. So, yeah, but it fuels me every day, mate. Yeah, with with um, going back to the heavy lifts and, and just to finish off the land this plane, 
um, when I would do my big lifts, whether it were deadlifts or rack deadlifts or squatting or something like that, what I would do mentally is truly, I would sort of uh, start processing the morning off. I knew that day was going to be a big, big lift. And, yeah, yeah. And I would mentally start telling myself, like calm before the storm in a sense, right? Um, and I would start then building myself, building myself up to the point where I would get into a big lift and I was not like emotional crying, but I was like aggressively emotional. And what I call that, and I've said this many times in my podcast, is Pandora's box. I would unlock Pandora's box oh, yeah, and man. then I would put that shit straight back in. And knowing how to control that beast yeah. came from time. Obviously with you serving in the military, you know, there's uh, certain uh, attributes that you learn mm-hmm. and you get taught the discipline, all the, the things that, you know, civvies don't see yeah. all the, the, the small little, uh, the, from the smallest of things from polishing buttons to polishing your shoes to the uniformed to all of the above, especially when you're doing the, you know, the, the Queen's Queen Guard stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to be on point and no transitioning into strongman, that mentality now equates yeah, mate, into massively. all these yeah. small little details but make the biggest of things. You yeah. know, you're talking about weight loss, you're talking about, you know, cardiovascular endurance. Um, now these things now are, uh, uh, again, the smallest of changes but the biggest of changes, right? Yeah, mate. So that mentality and, and again, the, the, we're talking about the, the demon being unleashed in the big lifts. Um, is that hard to put back into his box once yeah. you've done it? I usually leave a gym, mate. I will, yeah. walk, I will walk up the gym because I'm... Weather's gone well. Sometimes you miss... Everyone fails lifts. So, you know, it's, it's part of the sport. Everyone... Mm. I will leave a gym and just sit outside for 10 minutes. I've got like a set of power stairs outside my gym or I'll just sit yeah. on the floor because yeah. I'm... Yeah. It's, you can press. I have to. I won't talk. I just like... Take it off. No one has... It's like... I, I don't have any sort of ego in my gym. It's nothing like that. But everyone just knows then. Like, it's the same with everyone. If you have a big lift, people just leave you alone. And I would walk out, <laughs> take a little breather, and come back and I just start laughing. I'm like, oh, that was heavy. Like, yeah. Or sometimes I'll happen straight away. I just put the little weight down. I'm just like, what was I? I was so pumped up for. I was like, that was easy. I did. I did a tripled 400, then I doubled 420. And I was like, why was I so pumped? I started laughing. I put the, drop the box. It's like, ah. Oh. But sometimes, like, if I hit something hard, uh, it takes me a while to just shut. And sometimes I, that will end the session sometimes. Sometimes I've hit it so hard, I'm like, can't, I can't switch off. I'm, I'm, I have to go. Like, this is. Like I'm just doing like the assistance. I'm like, I can't feel it. I can't. I'm just like still almost vibrate there. And I'm like, this yeah. is not good. Um, nothing like caffeine induced or anything. Yeah. I'm just like so pumped. I'm like, I'm going. And I'll go home and just sit in my front garden or sit on my you know, I'm just chilling out. Like that was uh, that was intense. But is that from you mentally psyching yourself up for, or, yeah. or or is that more of the lift itself? It's it's probably the thing I think of. It mentally, yeah. bur- it just burns hard, and that was. I went on tour. Oh my god! When was the first tour, Jim? Eleven years ago, wait. And I still fresh in my mind mm-hmm. when I think of, and it will sometimes it burns hard. And like, yeah, um, yeah anything, like, anything particular you can tell the viewers. I've never spoken about it. I think it's because it like loses its power. I've said before. They asked me, the world's strongest man, mm. um, do the interviews, and I said I just don't talk about it. Um, it was with Gemini, it was Corporal Lodwick. He got a mention in dispatches out there doing the contact. Um, and he was a great soldier, great one of my one of, a very good friend of mine. Still talk now, and he messaged me about it a couple of weeks ago before I did the world's strongest man. And he was like, "Remember that day?" I was like, "I do, mate." Yeah, I don't tell him I think about it. I don't tell him like it's a certain thing we, me and him, went through. Um, yeah, and he just messaged me. I was like, uh, "I was like, yeah." And then sometimes when I when I, I think of it and I go for it. It's hard for me to just switch off because it was, you know, it was what we went through. So sometimes I'm like, I'll just go home. I'm like, I gotta go home. Like that session was good. The main lift was, and yeah, I got a session. I'll come back tomorrow and do that. I mean, I was coming, I open the gym in the morning, do what I have to do and do it. But sometimes I just find it so hard when I've, I go, like, it's only, I don't think of it all the time though. Yeah, I mean, it's when I go balls to the wall when it has to be done. When yeah. I, and I'm like yourself, this is genuine. I'll wake up and go, got a massive dead lift today. And I've eaten my breakfast and everything just be perfect. And then like, Gem would be like, just relax now. You got, you got a big, you got a big lift. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then she's like, drive me to the gym, or I won't take the bike to the gym because I'm like, oh, sh- don't you don't want to hurt yourself? If you fall off the bike. I'm like, no, 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 I'm right. And then all day, I'd be like, I got that big 400. I got the big, I hit 410 a few years ago on the squat in the gym. That was all I could think about. I was like, oh. And then I was like, oh, but this and that. I was like, no, no. I was like, I don't give a shit. I got a massive squat tonight. So, um, 
Yeah, but sometimes when I when I go balls out, it's hard for me to just. I can't. Sometimes I can't. Gym, I can't do it again. Like I just can't switch off. So I just off home. Like I have to. Otherwise, it would be a nuisance in the gym. Like, <laughs> yeah. What do you do to calm down? Then what? What? What's the What's the tactics you've got that you can calm yourself down? I just, you? I just put uh, I put um, music on in the house. That's generally I go in Alexa, play music. Yeah. And I'll be. I just sit, sit down, just let. Usually, I'm a big country and western fan. Um, Luke Coombs and all that. It's pretty cool. Um, I just listen to music, mate. Yeah. I, I know it's just crazy. I just put it on. Have a shower, place with the house. And it's like, phew, I'm happy now. Do you like Jelly Roll from Country? You know Jelly Roll? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, Jelly Roll's my boy. Yeah, he was on the, you had him yeah, on, he was on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he was, he, he, you with Jelly Roll and Brian Shaw have filled these chairs up very well, right? <laughs> yeah, there's, I think we're getting, the, the guests are getting bigger <laughs> and I'm getting smaller. So um, I don't know if I need to get some wide angle lenses, particularly on yeah, me, yeah, tires. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but again, just kind of moving off the, the military side of things, because I think it's very, uh, such a powerful mentality to have mm. such, you know, such, well, to have that chapter in your life. 13 years of dedication yeah. to, to the Welsh Guards. Again, something that you may not know about myself is I went to become uh, in the, well, I went to join the army, uh, the Navy army, uh, RAF all fighting out for yeah. me, and um, Welsh Guards was going to be what I was going into, and oh. they failed me on flat feet, the last test of all, which blows my mind. There was two tests, yeah. I've said it yeah. so many times on so many podcasts, but there was two tests that they failed people on back then was glasses yeah. and flat feet. And I think to myself, the quality soldiers they lost out on a stupid flat feet thing. Loads, mate, you know, yeah. of course it was, mate. That's just... And you were in the recruiting at the, at the very end of your serving, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Did like two and a half years in, I think just, yeah, about two and a half years, yeah. Yeah. If you talk to anyone, if you talk to anyone in battalion, I was down there for like forever, but it's because <laughs> it's the posting you want. It's in Cardiff, it's in Mainly Barracks. I was, I was 10 minutes from my house, mate. It was a great job. What a convenience. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I went to sign off and get out, and then they were like, oh, what can we do? I was like, send me to Cardiff. And they were like, ah, oh, cool. And I was like, he was just like six months posting, yeah. but I got in with the boss down there, Kev Jury, and he was like, just writing these letters and saying, I was good. I was I could talk. I mean, yeah. If we were let loose, this podcast would be like 10 hours long. I, mean, oh, I know, but we've just had the, the, the alarm of it being over an hour already. <laughs> but, but moving on from the military, yeah. trying to get this podcast yeah, moving. Yeah. Um, we, we've now covered um, a small fraction, of course, your 13 years, but yeah. you played you played rugby during that time. You played yeah. for high-level rugby yeah. for, for, the, for the Army. Yeah. Um, you played against the best, the best, probably some guys who've gone on to do some incredible things professionally. Yeah, Rock and Nanguni plays for Bath. Yeah. Um, Bola Bola plays for the Ospreys. Matty Dwyer plays for the Ospreys. Um, James Dixon. Uh, Lewis Beanie is up. I think he's with, um, he's in the Premiership. Playing this, maybe Gloucester. So I played all these guys, there. and the British Army rugby centre is it's like professional, mate. It's, it's amazing. It is. You got everything you could want as if it's a professional. Because Andy Sanger obviously was on the fringes of the Harlequins. Now he's in charge of the development squad. He was bringing all that to the Army centre, mate. It's a great. You're there, like you're a tracksuit soldier. Uh, but I did it for a while, but I never intentionally like went to play sport. I just went in to do just do a job. Mm. And then it was after the first tour, I was like, oh, you play rugby as well, and then I just play loads of rugby in the Army centre, mate. You're like. Boxing's the best man in the army. Yeah. I mean, is um, Jack Marshman, UFC yeah. fight. He's fucking. Of course, he's, he's Jack. Yeah, I mean, um, he's paratrooper mate. I mean, he's a stud. Yeah, he's a. I did. Um, he was on the recruiting team for a bit with me when we were in Bridgend. Yeah, he's from our neck of the woods. I think. Yeah, See, I, I've. I've uh We've bumped into each other on Wine Street once or twice in the past. <laughs> Back in the old days. <laughs> but he's, uh, he's yeah, good, yeah, but. Um, no, but just about the army set up. I mean, played that level of rugby is professional. Yeah. I loved it, and then I was lucky enough to get done with Bridgend in the Welsh Premiership. Played for Newport, and I thought I was have a. I thought that was it. I played for Newport now, but then I was like, no, nah, I was getting too heavy. The last game then was against Merthyr, and there was injury after injury, and I stayed on for like eighteen minutes. And there's a photo. I don't know, black and white photo of me, like like like, <laughs> and my head's like it's when I was I was about one fifty, mate, one hundred and fifty kilos trying to play rugby. Yeah, these are all numbers. I have no clue what you're talking about right now. They're heavy, heavy. Yeah, three hundred odd pounds, mate. Shh, all, for, for a rugby boy, it's yes, a rugby boy. mate. There's uh, there's a couple of photos. Um, oh, I don't know why I'm laughing. There's a funny story with this. Pete the Meat, um, used to play for Scarlets. He was playing for him, right? Dale McIntosh, the chief. Oh yeah. I boshed him, douche. There's a photo of me just. Just before I connected with him, he's lying on the floor walking around, they're giving him shit. The man was having a heart attack. <laughs> no, shit. I shouldn't laugh because I had fun, but 
they was like, why the fuck you walking around the pitch like doing this? And they're, like you're just like going from ruck to ruck to ruck. He was having a heart attack. You had two stents put in, mate. <laughs> oh shit! Oh no, it's not. It's not a funny story. I don't know no, 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 no. But still, but just like, like yeah. about the rugby and things, and um, yeah. yeah, it was just this is a crazy story. But that was my last game. Um, and then Dale tried to sign me, give me a sign for Merth. As I walked off, I was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm like, I'm absolutely bollocks, mate. And then went in Tyrone Jones, then who's the coach? I think he's still the coach of Newport. And I was like, you signing for us and Gav again next season? I was like, no. I was like, I'm officially retired. But then I played one game then. We got to the Philly got to the finals and we played Amherst that Shane Williams played for shouldn't have been allowed to play from that game. It's the only game he started all season and I was like he can't be that good. He's he's in his forties. Are you still very very? Oh, he's still good. He was the world's best player in it, a lot. Didn't they play that in um, Arms Park? No, it was at um, Millennium Stadium. The Millennium Stadium, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. how oh, my brain goes. Connected. Yes. Yeah, yeah and um, I remember him starting. I was like that's a bit cheeky because he hasn't started any other game. But yeah. What a player! Um, Great player. And that was my last game. That was literally my last game I played. We didn't make the. F- we didn't beat them. We should have. We should have. We whooped them, but we, sh- we didn't. Um, and that was my last ever game of rugby, mate. And then from there, yeah, it went. The cap yeah. was off. It How was much weight did you put on from your rugby days to your strongman days? Oh my god! There's a photo, right? I don't know if I'll be able to find it, of me in the team lineup, and it, it looks superimposed. But I'm like sort of like that. I'm about. 150, maybe 160 even. I put 40 kilos on top of that, mind, as well. Yeah. So that wasn't even my biggest. I mean, there's a photo where the gym has just opened. Me and Simon stood there, side on. It's like I got a walk under my T-shirt, mate. It's like, yeah. it's like, <laughs> like, I got a bit of a belly now, but I mean, no joke. I was, you did that photo, man. I was huge, man. But yeah. uh, not not good. Not good at all, mate. Yeah, but you, you, you again, your mentality and talking earlier in the show was power equals. Mass moves. Oh, I kept saying mass moves mass, but it just, and then, Frustrating because I couldn't, and I was like, "What am I doing wrong?" I was like, "I was like, I melted welly, mate. It was not good." I melted welly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rain boot in the US. <laughs> like, What's I'll translate. <laughs> uh, so, so you managed to then the, the rugby days. Obviously, were done and dusted. Moving on to the strongman. Your first, your first strongman was the novice, right? Were yeah. you, did you do that whilst you were in the military, or do you stay where you? Yeah, I was in the military. I went home on the weekend. I trained on the weekends in a gym called Parathletics. Um, they were a great help, mind. Um, yeah. I'm not, that's not a plug enough. I didn't mean to do that, but um, they had a great gym. And I went home on the weekend and won every event. <laughs> it, was, it was good. It was, it was like um, England's strongest or England's powerful man, novice. I won it. Qualified for this other show. And um, come forth for that, and I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not going through the novice route as I'm getting quite strong. And the guy shouldn't. It was like a mistake on my my part at the end that dropped me to fourth. Mm. Um, and then I just went straight to Wales' strongest man and, and almost beat Ben Brennan, but he beat me like by one point. And I was like, qualified for the UKs, and then just it literally just went from there, mate. Within two years, I was at the Worlds. What blows my mind, Gav? This is what going on to your seventh year in strongman is that or six this will be my so this is my sixth year this is your current six year yes, yeah, mate, Wh- yeah which when you think about it right in in any any sport any sport to become one of the world's best in six years is is incredible so considering that you your dna wasn't focused on any of that oh. training style being the military running playing rugby there was yeah you could say there's some crossover lifts that could have helped you you know uh, maybe foundationally yeah but there was no purpose lifts focus lifts no you making that change over obviously you said the diet was no point but oh. but but the training obviously was now focused yeah blowing up that fast and and what is it was it uh three years you were on the world you were in the world's strongest man groups yep. so after after signing yourself up to full-time strong man yeah it was yeah i mean um i got the army and then i think it was like four months i won the uk strongest man and then I had to call up to the world. So it was the year after I left the army. Because I, you know, what's great about it, and I think I don't think about it enough, there was people who laughed. I know for a fact there was people giggling behind my back and giving me shit. And then six months later, I become, or four months later, so I became the first Welshman to ever win it. Mm-hmm. And obviously, I went on to double it, which is an amazing, title, brutal show. But I won the UK's, and then a few months later, I had a phone call to go and go to the world's strongest man. And when you put it like I haven't, I haven't thought about it. Yeah, the first like two years I was doing it, I was still in the military, so I couldn't let loose, I couldn't, and then obviously, you know, like, like pulling a parachute, in the sense I just put all that weight on, because where could I have been if I had done it sensibly, if I hadn't <laughs> gone so big so fast? But yeah, when you put it like that, oh, it's not too bad, is it? But what I should have quitted, right? I mean, I think yeah. one of the reasons why you're the fan favourite, you know, in, in, in a lot of these events, is that you have, um, there's this very likeable look to you, and when they get to meet you, the fans, you know, again, I was 
at the world's strongest man. You had a lot of fans that were yeah. going ape shit for you every time you left the the uh, the tent. tent and, yeah. yeah, and 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 for me again, I, I'm very prideful on on seeing that flag f- flown. <sighs> but then when uh, you know there's there's somebody that's getting all this attention as a Welshman and it's not me, I'm like you. No, but it's, you're leading the way, mate. You're one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. Oh, thank you, mate. Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah, and. Um, you know, some of the words you're saying, mate, is is is, is unbelievable uh, for me. Like, it's hard for me to accept this. Like, I'm sat here with you, so, Jeremy, I'll tell you, I'm a humble guy, though. I mean, and when I meet the fans, I get in trouble at Giants live shows for talking so much. Like, literally, at Cardiff, like there was like 30 people left, and I just had a group photo with them, and then the woman's like, "I send the photo to everyone." And I was like, "I'm so sorry, but like, this could all be over in a blink of an eye." So I think, um, was it Michael Jordan said, "Play every game as if it's the last game." So I compete as if it's my last ever show. I, I, it could be a lot, you know, we're very privileged that I get to do this for a job. So when I speak to fans and speak to people who uh, make the spokes, if it wasn't for them, we'd still be in car parks. I'm, I'm just a guy from Caffili, but yeah. Um, I, I love it, mate. I love the sport. And uh, yeah, maybe that's why I do you know, get, you know, get a lot of attention because maybe I'm just humble. Some people just don't. I don't know, they, they're, they're, they're arrogant, maybe. They come across arrogant, don't they? But I'm not. I can't be. I think my father wouldn't let me, like, be arrogant. The way I was brought up, I had to be very respectful. So I respect mm-hmm. people. Like, I'd be like to be treating myself. So, yeah, that's why I talk forever. Because yeah. I just, uh, not because I like the sound of my own voice. I just, you you can be dropped at, uh, in a split second, can you? And it could be over. So, yeah, just enjoy it. And that's what I do. I just enjoy the sport, man. I think the the testimony to to most athletes that give back to their fans that the, the fans would always be there when you retired. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Brian Shaw, you know, he's one of them guys that I that I look at uh, from the outside in and, and say he done it right. Yeah. You know, not only yeah. was he a student of the game, but then he became a champion in that game that he wanted and put his whole dedicated life into. Yeah. He's just retired. Um, obviously, one his show he, he he promoted and pushed on there's no bias there he just no, genuinely right. he won yeah he won the show that he again but no brian's walking away from a sport where to your point it started off in car parks it yeah. was in fields and it's yeah. grown exponentially even since i've been a fan and watching it from the outside in there was always the world's strongest man as like that pinnacle but then all the qualifying shows it was really based on the promoter and how much yeah. he was going to put into that show itself. Yeah. You know, you've got, uh, you know, Darren Sadler, shout out to Darren. I think he's doing an absolute phenomenal job with Giants Live and what they're doing and packing out arenas and making guys like yourself um, and putting guys like yourself on a pedestal for the yeah. fans to meet. Giving you guys a platform to show your true character, show what goes on behind the, the yeah. scenes and then have the ability to talk about each and every one of of your guys' stories because yeah. every athlete has a story. Yeah. Every athlete has got to the world's strongest man because of X. And it's normally because of driven trauma. Any one of us athletes that are at the top yes, mate. all have driven trauma. Yeah. You have your driven trauma. I have my driven trauma. We use that to unlock, you know, like I said, the Pandora's box um, to, to, to get through these big lifts, to get through the hardest of days. Oh. And, and, and it's no... In the shoes that I'm in, I feel it's a, a duty for me now to showcase athletes like yourself and give give guys like Evan Singleton, who's been on the podcast, yeah. Brian Shaw, who's been on the co- podcast, Mitchell Hooper, who's been on the co- podcast, all the opportunity to tell their stories. And each one of them is different and unique yeah. in itself. But they all believed that they were going to win. If not, now believe they will win. Yeah. And you're added to that list. Yeah, just... It is crazy how like it's almost when you talk to somebody. That's where we. I think that's where you connect so much with somebody like yourselves. Like, I feel like I've known you for years. I could just have a, I could have a cup of tea and talk. That's how it feels like. I just I wasn't nervous. I said this just feel like I said if you can't do it, let's just go for a brew. Yeah. Even if it's come to the gym and just drink a protein shake and just chat about shit. We, we make so what we're doing right now. Yeah. Just, Minus a protein shake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when you meet these guys and you just talk and you get to know them, like Evan uh, sent me a nice message with what happened. Um, and then he spoke to me. No, so I actually didn't. He said I didn't want to message you. He said I'd rather just talk to you. So I got to Colorado and we spoke. And he said I know I know where you're going through, mate. And then um, can you tell the fans what, what we're talking about? Yeah. So um, a few weeks ago, it's not even two months. My father was involved in a very serious bike accident. Uh, um, uh, a guy just come overtake him on a blind bend and just 
smashed him into the floor. Um, and he's seventy years old. He was seventy years age, sorry. And he was on a bike. Yeah, he was on a motorcycle. Yeah, um, my father rides a um, a sports to twelve hundred, and it was a pretty pretty big bike. Um, yeah, but he's sort he's sort of recovered. You know what I mean? It's like because you know suffered a serious injury. He has a bleed on the brain. That's why they couldn't airlift him from the site. We spoke about it earlier. They couldn't airlift him because the pressure on the head, so they weren't too sure. So um, two choppers were called, one for him, one for the other rider. Um, but he's he's tough. He's tougher than the bike. He's the toughest man I know. Hard man. Um, stubborn. I think his stubbornness has helped him. Um, he refused. I he says he refused to give up. If that makes sense, because this was crazy. We went shopping the other week. They won't know it's a Tesco. And a guy started talking to me at the, the self checkout, and I was like, "Oh, cool! Maybe you recognise me off TV. I'm not being big headed in Kafili. Everyone, you know." And he went, "I was the car behind your father. I was the first on the scene." <gasps> yeah, and I had goosebumps. And Gemma was there, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And he looked, bloodshot eyes, scruffy beard. He's like, "I haven't slept since, mate. So I can barely sleep." He's like, "Mr. Dead Gav." Yeah, he was the. He said, "I slammed on," and he said, like, oh. "Can't get the image of your father coming off the bike." He said, "It was like a war zone, mate." And he said, "The other rider." Yeah, but um, and I said, look, I said the best thing you could do is like come to my gym because like, the boys down the gym love my father. Mm. And then as we left, I said, when you come and see my dad, but I can't seem to get hold of him. He messaged me on Facebook. I can't, I can't find the message because when it happened, I like I didn't have my phone for three weeks. I just like so almost like just put it in the in the house. I was like, I don't need that because Giants Live put a post out or said something at the live stream that I was meant to be competing at the time and I just couldn't. I just left the show the day before, so everyone was like, where's Gav? And then Colin Bryce said something. So the phone went mad, and I was like, no, I don't need it. But I said, oh, the best thing you could do is come come and see my dad, because he said, I, I tried talking to your father, but he was unresponsive. There was a lot of, like, they, he was in a mess. I said, I understand, I know what happened. But he's like, I'm a, apologies for talking. I said, no, it's fine, mate, trust me, it's fine, I, you know? Um, and he said, like, I just stayed with him. I stayed with him until the ambulance. And then a woman got out of the car and just held his hand, and we both stayed with him, and uh, the police, the paramedics, and the ear meds, or the emails just let him like talk to him. And I sort of I said you don't know how much that could have helped because the hearing is the last thing to go. And I said he might have just been lying there thinking, Oh, this is it then. I can't hear nothing or just your car's passing by or something. I said, You talking to him might have saved his life or did save his life. Because he was unresponsive. I said, Yeah, no, he was hit hard, mate. And he was like, Yeah, yeah, he got um it um the way it went down. It wasn't you know, it you know, it wasn't good. But um what 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 exactly happened, Gov? So yeah, Carl overtook, hit his back wheel, and just threw him into the floor. Um, so the bike like flipped one way the other way, and then threw him off the bike. So then he broke his right foot, left hand broke his nose, and then suffered a, a severe bleed on the brain, which is obviously still in a you know still it's gonna be there for the rest of his life. But the, you know the, the silver lining, if you want to call it, that there was no surgery needed, so to release the pressure, um, which is good because uh, I mean at seventy years of age, yeah, at thirty you'd struggle to recover or even survive something like that. But then he was on life support for, yeah, seven days. Um, and every morning, I, I, the first two days, I, I no joke, I didn't sleep. I got home, we let, we, I'd sent everyone home. Even on the youngest, I sent everyone home myself today. Just my mother, I've never seen my mother so upset. It was like a bad dream. I walked in, I said, this is a, I said, this is a joke. I said, I'm going to wake up. Jim was like, relax. I was like, this is a joke. This doesn't happen. Like, worst thing is, my sister didn't even know he'd been involved in a crash and she works. In, this is genuine. She works in recess and walked from one end to the other. I went, phone Gemma, just, I've just seen Dad. And I was like, what the... F-? And then I was expecting to go to a and and have him laughing on a bed with a broken foot. Going, oh, look, what happened? Or a couple of scratches and bruises. But no, nah, Gemma grabbed my hand and said, we have to go to recess, Gav. So if anyone knows what recess is, it's resuscitation. It's the worst place you can be. It's where all the red calls go. And then as I walked through the doors, he was the first bed in the bay. Um, both sides split open to drain his lungs. Um, obviously, his head was bleeding, toe was foot was smashed to bits. Um, so I sent everyone home. Um, and we stayed at about three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. And I just, I just had to ask, "Is it good to go?" I asked my. Obviously, my dad was unresponsive. I just thought, "Is it good, okay to go, Dad?" You know, I, did, I didn't know what to do. Like, yeah. um, sort of like, because uh, people said oh, I might be easy to handle with my previous job. I was like, "Well, no," because my father wasn't at war with me. So. So I left, and then every morning they would ring at the same time, half seven, to say, it's okay, it's okay, and this through the night, that through the night. And there was one morning then where they rang at like half six, and I was like, oh, this is it. Because when that ventilator goes in, at seven, my dad's got COPD, it was bad for the lungs. And at seven years, I said, this is it. And Jim was like, no, no, you'll be fine. They're just ringing, probably say he's had a bad night or something. 
And I was like, oh, and she was cheery as hell in there. So I was like, that's weird. They're not going to say he's dead if they're really happy. And she went, oh, we brought him off the ventilator. Oh, he, wow. He's fine. And he, and then it was like, oh, he's asking for his wife. And obviously, he's very, he was like, oh, where's, my, you know, where's his mother? Uh, his wife, sorry, my mum. And then he asked about his bike, obviously. But um, that'll be, that'll be get fixed. I can fix that for him. But um, like if he ever rides again. But yeah, that absolutely sucked, mate. I've never, I haven't really spoken about it that much, to be honest with you. But, um, you know, he's a safe rider, but you can't control what other people do. Mm. And 53 years, he's had, like, two crashes. Um, he's okay. He's in the house. Came home a few weeks ago. Um, um, and he's one of the things that's changed as well. Like, I can like I compete for my family now, but I know sounds... I don't want to be gruesome, but I think it's my fault. I'll tell you the truth. Because I wasn't there to protect him. That's what I think. Uh, my wife hates me saying it. My best friend Simon hates me saying it. But he was out riding with a guy he doesn't really know. And I just blame myself for him, mate. And I, I, it burns me that I wasn't there. Because when I got to the hospital, I have all this size and strength and I couldn't do anything. I just wanted to pick him up and hold him. Like I felt weak. as Yeah, I couldn't help my father. I just stood there. I was like, what the f- am I supposed to do? Like, I, I can do, I can flip cars, I can throw stones, I can throw human beings, but I can't do anything to my dad. What am I supposed to do? I just wanted to give him all my strength and and just reduce me to nothing. That's what I wanted. As if I could give him, transfer everything I had. If sucked, mate. And it just burns. Jim, I hate me saying it, but yeah, I blame myself for it. I understand I, you know, should have, would have, could have, shouldn't have, shouldn't have. And the worst thing was I shouldn't have been at that show. I was not knocking Giants life. I chose to do it. I'm a man. But I took it on like last, like a couple of days notice. I would have been out with him. I know I would have been out with him. And in my mind, I have to suffer. So when I lift, I hurt and I cut, I bleed, I collapse. I believe I have to suffer until he's fixed. I never really said that out loud to anybody, but that's the mindset I've had. And that's what I think about every day I've trained since his injury. I believe that I have to punish myself because I wasn't there to help him. Is that on the mend? Sort of, yeah. He's never gonna be the same man ever again. So he will be lucky. He'll be lucky to ride ever again. Wow. So twelve months from the day you'll have another scan to see if how the you know, severe the bleed is or if it's getting worse. Um, but I honestly don't think you'll ever ride again. So my my process is that I'll just make myself suffer just so we can you know because it's nothing literally I, I believe it's, it's nothing what he went to so I know it might be a, um, a destructive way to go about business but um, I, and Jim has never heard me say that but that is how I see it because I wasn't there to help my dad yeah it could have been a lot worse I spoke with Darren Sander about this who was an amazing bloke um, he kind of went through the same sort of thing with his mother I won't get yeah. into that but he just said when you're feeling shit mate how bad it could have been I said yeah I do that's why it burns. It hurts. I'm trying to get upset or angry about it, because yeah. But um, a, you know, a son should be there to protect his dad. Like a dad would protect his son. So yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't know why I think that way. But yeah, I, I kind of take it as my own fault. Because he shouldn't have been there. It, sh- it should have been. You know, you, Friday's usually with me. You come to the gym. About that time, he would have been at the gym as well. So I get. Uh, yeah. It's the way I have to be, mate. Yeah. I don't think that, you know, you should blame yourself. I think that there should be something taken from this and put into your training. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't flip this into more of a, a negative element. There should be a positive, yeah. because now you're doing it for other reasons, right? Yeah, the first session back was by far one of the best sessions. I didn't try, I couldn't train for a week. I couldn't. I was in the. As, as, like obviously, the ward he was on, we couldn't just go in every day. It was like yeah. one hour a day because it was 24 hour care for him because he was on a life support machine. But So I didn't train for about seven days, I think. I just couldn't couldn't switch off, couldn't sleep. The, my headache was like as if someone was like squeezing. I know that doesn't match for what he, ends, what he was going through. I was lying in bed, just like, like we might just like staring at the ceiling. Like I, will fall, I was like, I'm going to fall asleep in a bit. And then the sun came up, and I was like, right, another day, knackered through the day at the hospital. And then I just back to bed, and I just like, I will fall asleep, and I just couldn't. For two days straight, mate, honest. And then the session back, when he came off life support, it, I was, it was by far one of the best, probably the best session I've ever had in my life. Absolutely smashing things to pieces, and I was like, yeah. And it drives me, like, ever since that happened. I know it's, yeah, maybe that is a positive thing, you, you know, because you have to focus on certain things to lift. Yeah. 
sometimes it's, it's, you can't just focus on the weight. And like we said, we're a bit broken, so I focus on it a lot. And it's, it's literally, a, um, yeah, like I do it for different reasons because it could have been a lot worse. It could, could have been a totally different conversation. Absolutely, and, that, and that's what you got to really yeah. see, see this as the, again, the, the glass half full here, right? We could be having a conversation that yeah, not even going to say it, but, yeah. but, but it didn't happen. Yeah. But now that something has clicked inside you that maybe wasn't there before, there's a light bulb, there's, there's yeah. something that's going on, and you're, you're pissed off for greatness. You know? Yeah, it was, I, yeah, I don't keep saying that. I shouldn't blame myself. It's not about me, it's about my dad, but. Yeah, something just snapped. And I was like, he loves the sport. Like, he loves what I do. And I, he was, he couldn't come to the show in Cardiff because it was too much for him. Like, sensory overload. So my mother came. Um, yeah, she was crying her eyes out. My dad was crying when I phoned him the day after. Just like, he's so happy for me. It was a great result. And going back to the Worlds, I was just like, it's for you, Dad. It's for everyone. But, like, this could have been totally different. It might not have been. Who knows? Yeah, that's, we won't go down that avenue. But you get what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, um, but you were at the show when you had this news. I don't know if we mentioned this. Yeah, I was I was in London, so I was sat. They just went for food, and it was just I just it just I know it's stupid to say hindsight because I hate saying that. But something felt off, and I knew I shouldn't have been. I said to him, I said, I don't think I should be doing this show. I remember I was like, it's last minute. I'm, uh, the events are okay for me. I thought about Albert Hall. It's a great show, great venue. I've done it every single year. Yeah, um, it's it's a cool place. And then when it, I, was just, I said I shouldn't have been there. There's no one to blame but myself, but yeah. So that drive out of London, then two and a half, three hours was horrible. I just, uh, mate, like, I'm surprised I'm not speeding tickets. Like it was, excuse me, but it was the calmest I've been driving home. It's weird, mate. Like usually, you know, someone cuts you up, oh, but it was just like, mm. I don't know. Um, it was horrible. Like, uh, I was trying to, yeah, say it calm. I think I was just trying to just relax and not get into an argument with somebody because. I'd probably be serving time now if I if I'd got out of the car or something. But oh man, it's like you never think it's going to happen when you read about and see him on you know the Facebook and social media and on the news about this car crash. You're like, oh god, I hope he's okay. Mm-hmm. You're like, that's never going to happen to me. And you know the worst thing was he was like 100 meters from my house. Oh wow, very close. And he was at, he was on his way home as well. Yeah. Like he was going home, and this is what I got in my head. It was like, why were you going down? You never he never drives that way. He went on the back way to the house, not down the front sort of way. Past the front of the shops, as, yeah. How, how much has uh, uh, has your dad played an inspirational role in in all you've done? Uh, yeah, he is. He is like, he just comes to the gym and he uh, he just sit there in awe. And he's like, "Oh, what's that way?" He's not an idiot. He's he's a smart man. He's he's sharp about him. You know, he's a, he's as he's sharp as anything. But yeah, he loves it. Yeah, he he's just like, "Oh, don't mind what you do. I still love you. I'll still be proud if you come out." He's that sort of dad. Yeah, yeah. He wants me to win. He loved me playing rugby. Loved me when I boxed the army. Loved me when I was in boxing before I joined. Loved me in the army. Absolutely loved it. Um, you know, you see me in my tunic. You see me in my two dress. Getting back from operational tours, things. Like, he was so proud. And now he's like, I'm even like, I'm bursting because like you're, you're a strong man and you were a soldier. He tells all his mates down the club about it. So, yeah, he's a huge role model to me. If I can be half of what my father is, I'd be something special. Like I mean, mm. old school. It'd be this, you, know, you know, I mean, well, old school. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't. You know, I wasn't brought up hard, but me, all my dad would have to just look at me and I'd be like, "All right." Yeah. So, but he brought me up right, man. I, I, I get probably piss people off saying that, whatever. But like, yeah, respect, yeah. and uh, he's is one of the reasons why I do it. My whole family is like, I do it for them. Like, say, as I think I say, "Oh, my son does this," not to show off, but it's like, "Oh, my son does," and kind of is showing off, and we all show off a bit. But um, yeah. Um, could have been a lot worse, mate. Absolutely. Who else has been a, an inspirational role for you to get to where you are right now? It'd be my wife. Yeah. I mean, um, you guys have been together how long? Long time. <sighs> I mean, check, count the grey hairs. It's like count the circles on the tree. I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're not doing yourself any fucking uh, no. justice, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we met a long sixteen ti- sixteen years, mate. We met. Wow. Um, so she's seen all the changes. Yeah, she was like, it was funny because someone shared the photo of me playing for Newport, which yeah. is a club local to me. And then someone said, It's crazy that you had abs in that photo. And I was like, Yeah. And she was like, Can you get them abs back? I was like, <laughs> Maybe when I'm done. Generally, she's like, Yeah, she, she, I see her looking. She's like, Yeah, you're in a fucking good shape there. And I was like, Well, I'm in a shape now, but just a different shape. <laughs> <laughs> More of a strong man in yeah. shape. Abs, ab, the abs are still there. They're just, they're just hiding. They're just hiding. Yeah, my wife, she works incredibly hard. Yeah. And to see her. 
do everything she does, and especially through COVID. Like I said earlier, everyone had their ass kicked in COVID. Everybody, from yeah, you know, from the the guy who works in the corner shop to to the nurses at the top. So, um, lifting weights is not that hard when you consider what she what they had to go through for them three three to four years. Well, the department now is still still on his ass. The NHS yeah. is on his ass as it is. Most people don't know what the NHS is, but um, National Health Service. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I always believe if that falls, Britain falls behind her because mm. it's the spine of Britain. So uh, if me, if I have to struggle a little bit um, in, in lifting weights, that's kind of okay when I see the wife get home from a shift. Yeah. Absolutely shattered and some of the things we talk about, I think we have to talk because it helps mm. decompress. Uh, for the first few months of that COVID, it's like a, it's like a tour of Afghanistan. Mm. Literally, the, I, and, I just, and it pissed me off when people said it was a fake thing. All we had to do was just pop down to your local A and E, you know, and just say, "Look what's going on here." So, um, yeah, she drives me. She is stronger than I. I've said I say it all the time, stronger than I'll ever be. Yeah. If I didn't have my wife, I, I guarantee I wouldn't be a. And I was wild when I was young when we first met, fighting, drinking, and everything. Um. Yeah, but she sorted that out. So. Yeah, yeah, she is. She is my life. God, so cheesy. Sorry, to be like a little cheesy and straight yeah. out there. But yeah, yeah, I made a cry at the last show. I didn't mean to do that. But um, I'm trying to make you cry. It's impossible. No, I'm, I got, a, I got, a, I got a swinging brick for a heart, mate. You're right. Thanks, you got a swinging dick. It's all good. <laughs> I thought that was going to be the ending <laughs> sentence, and I was like, what is he talking about now? Uh, no, no, but um, yeah, it is, mate. She's yeah. my life. She, I compete, so we can, yeah, enjoy our life. We're going through certain things. Um, but it's a good thing, so yeah. Um, by the end of the year, things could be a little bit different as well. So yeah, all positive. We've got a really nice house we just bought, but you know, it's because if I have to bust my ass in the gym and do whatever I have to do just to get the things we want, then it's okay. If it makes your life a little bit easier getting home from twelve hours of what they have to go through down there, I mean, I do it. So I do everything for her. Yeah. You guys have just moved into the countryside, right? Yeah, yeah it was, it was bed was, but it's like out the back end of it, and it's it is quite the house, mate. Yeah, it's no, it's, it's not. I mean, it's not a mansion, but it's. it's done, I won't say it because you don't have to justify it, man. We live in America. Every comes on you and talks about all kinds of things yeah. they've got. No, but I just yeah, it's, it's, we are, we are very very grateful for what we got, and yeah. Um, I won't tell the address because I, when I first moved in, I was so keen for it. I was like, oh, you know where that place Because people are like, I'm from bed or something. From and I started giving the address. Just, and she was like, we've just moved and you've got to tell everyone where we live. And I was like, <laughs> but um, oh, it's a lovely place, mate. And, nice. Um, I usually post photos of my cat. He's exploring the van we live on now. So Yeah. I've uh, seen you guys done a, a little Q&A a couple of, uh, couple of months ago and, and that was your land, right? Yeah. So that's Beautiful. Like the one part that is split partly. It was really nice. Good jacuzzi at the top was lovely. But um, yes, scary at night though. I'm yeah. Scary, yes. I'm not saying I'm scared of the dark. Just, you just did. We all know who wears the pants in your house, mate. It's okay. Yeah. yeah you what? How, 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 Gemma, how tall are you? Five two. Five two. Are you five six? Yeah. Yeah. We all know. We seen it, didn't we? We all walked in here. We all know who wears that pants. It's yeah. all right, Gav. It's okay. Come and cuddle. It's only thunder and lightning. That's exactly what it's like. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. It's all right, man. We all know. Yeah. We all know. Um, but but again, you now have um, some big things planned for this year, um, yeah. and and um, you're obviously you've got your sights set on the world's strongest man in the next couple of years. Yeah. What what have you done to improve your strongman? And we'll kind of uh, end this with with, with strongman training. But what in, what lifts have you focused on more than any other? And also, um, what can we see now going into next year's world's strongest man? Is is more not more than my lifts. My lifts are, are almost the same. It's my conditioning. I mean, I was, I would literally the first year. I don't think I did any. I did hardly any moving, mate. The only condition I would do was like stone lifting and sandbag to shoulder. So what me and my coach, three um, D strength Dale, have, have worked on is just dropping the weight and just get moving my ass, mate. And I feel so much better. Like um, I have a complex where you think you're not big anymore. And because I train, like, with big guys, it's like, they don't sort of compliment you. Like, I hit certain numbers, and they were, and they go, that's all right, mate. They're, like, they're not like, yay. I'm like, and that's what I get off. I'm like, was that any good? I'm like, it's like 170 for a triple, and then I'm like, a log press, and I'm like, but is that all right? And they're just like, 
Yeah, no one pays attention. I'm like, I'm not even big anymore. <laughs> uh, generally, mate, I get it. I'm like, and I'll text somebody. Uh, like, can you just add the plates? Just make sure they read that what I said. But yeah, more about, and also my mindset. Yeah, I, I was always positive when I started this, but the mindset and the belief that now I'm taking scalps, beating people on certain events, mm-hmm. more consistent cons- consistency is key. If you're amazing at one and shit the other, you'll go from first to last, and you'll stay fast. Like, like that, especially at the world's strongest man, when second, like two, three seconds will drop you out to the top three and roof down. But yeah. so just more moving, a lot more moving, more conditional, more. It's more structured, mate. Not just max out, max out. Because you know yourself, if you maxed out four or five weeks in a row, you you would hardly make it to the end of the year. Like you say, max your squad up. That's all. That's all my training was. I go and lift heavy. There's no structure. I'm just going around in a circle, chasing my tail. And now it's Dale on board. I'm a coach, Dale. Phenomenal coach, mate. It's just gone. Let's 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 stop this. Let's strip this all. And it did when I first got me. Stripped everything back. It was like mm. hundred kilo log for reps. I was like, no, mate. He's like, trust me. And now it's I'm revving up. This is no joke. Revving up one eighties, like tripling three one uh, seventies in my squat. My everything's just moving because I've worked on my conditioning. He said, see, you had the power. Yeah. You just you literally didn't have the. Mm, how could you work in like engine terms? Yeah, you had a massive engine but a shite gearbox, so I couldn't put any power down because like. The gears just the gearbox just wouldn't take it, and now I'm fit. My gearbox is better, and now I can put all that power down. And I got two more big shows left this year with the World Tour Finals. So I got some unfinished business because what happened last time wasn't great for me. And I got the team uh, strongest nation. So it was us going to whoop the Americans again. I love that series. It's a great series. It's awesome, man. Did you come yeah. across? If you see you get across for it, yeah. Be awesome. uh, it does. I was watching the the Giants lives with the the unisex uh, team. Yeah, that's uh-huh. the most yeah. Oh, that, that is yeah, the same. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I love that stuff. It's great. Great camaraderie too. It was a. It was the like. You can't say, "Oh, this is the best show." That's the best show. By far the best show I've done. I understand I've had better results because I've like, second, yeah. whatever, won this and won that. But it just felt awesome, like because the press was off because it was like one or two events. Mm. But it was like where everyone was acting with each other backstage. So like the Ameri- I love the Americans, like the way they are, in like you know their like energy. It's just I love it. I love it. Their Martins Lissis as their captain, great, great human being. Like mm. not just a great strong man. Very rarely likes yourself. Just a, uh, not just sorry, a great human being. You know what I mean? That's. Yeah, I Thank mean, you, mate. I know okay. you're on my podcast, but keep the compliments coming. Yeah, but you very, you <laughs> very rarely find people like yourself, mate, who are willing to help someone. Like, yeah, it's gonna sound cheesy, and I'm, I'm not saying I would say this to your face without, without no cameras. Like, you, you very rarely get people like you who just a genuine human being, mate. Who of the passion you show on screen and on the social media is you? We spoke about it before, so like, just let me come on your podcast when you've had the likes of Brian Shaw on, yeah. So that's pretty cool. But so Martin Lissis, and he brings that to his team, and that's why they did so well. Yeah, we beat them, um, but that was one of the best shows I've ever done, mate. Do you think it's because that pressure is equally shared across the team? Hundred yeah, percent. It's not just like oh, I need to win Europe or the world. I Wills. need to win. I need to win, and I'm I'm carrying that weight. Yeah, it's eight of you to win one title. So yeah. it's like eight events or whatever events it is, six events. Some are singular, uh, but you go you know, go head to head. But you're like. Well, if I lose this, like, Hicksy destroyed, smashed the deadlift in. Mm. He did, like, 360 for, like, seven or eight on an axle. It was, like, you mutant, like. Um, so the pressure's off, yeah. That's why, because I got it. And I was just like, oh, it's just the end of the show. It's just, oh, I'm not saying that because Darren Sander might be watching, but it was a great show. But it was like, there's no pressure. If we, not like if we lose, of course, there's pressure you want to win. But it was just, like, it was shared. Like I said, yeah. it was, like, it was not just solely on me. If I fuck my event up and someone else does, it's kind of, ooh. Yeah. But um, it was a great show, mate. That'd be awesome. And then that's it. Then so them two shows. So world deadlift, um, no, the world um tour finals with the log lift championship, which is the max log. Um, and then yeah, that'll be the last show. And then Liverpool before it. Mm. Then we get ready for the world's strongest man next year, which I've again. which I've qualified for already, which I I didn't know what happened. So I thought it was just first place goes to Giants Light, uh, goes to the worlds, and then they sort of selective. But then when I got on the podium at um, Cardiff. Colin Bryce said all three of us are qualified. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, qualified for world. Yeah, qualified for world's strongest man next year already, 2024. Wow. Yeah, it was, so that was literally sort of on the podium. I was like, yeah, second place, that's not too bad. Evan, yeah. Evan great athlete. Um, you know, mixed it up all the way to the end. Um, second's not too bad. Um, yeah, obviously wanted first, but he went, oh, great. <laughs> he says it's not too bad. When he's second best in Wup. <laughs> is that what it is? You're the world's strongest man, right? No, it was... Um, the Giants world. lives. Uh, sorry, yeah. It was the World Open, world so open, it's, yeah. it's it's bigger than. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Because of course, I haven't been American athlete. 
Yeah, of course. And then he just went, yeah, all top three have qualified for the Wills. And I was just like, what? I thought I thought only the first place got yeah. it. Um, but no, I'm going to... Well, congrats go. on that, mate. Yeah, so it's not too bad. That's not a bad start for next year already. Yeah. I mean, that's the pressure off. So when it comes to Britain's Strongest Man now, I'm just focusing on the show and not like, I've got to get on the podium because obviously you know yourself, you stress. Mm-hmm. That's where things go wrong. Like, um, So I'm just going to compete now and then the pressure's on the other guys. Obviously Tom will be going back because he's two times World's Strongest Man and he's also with the results falling this way, this going this way this year. But, I mean, the pressure's off. And I just compete for it. I just fight. You know, when we get the events, that's all I'm going to focus on. I'm going to worry about, like, I have to get on the podium. Or what about third? What about second? I'm like, no, no. Yeah. I can just compete and just go hard because I'm going back. The pressure on you guys sort of thing. So, What yeah. is the timeline that you've given yourself to win the World's Strongest Man? Two years. I said it, like, last year. But within these two years now, this year, and this, so I'll make the finals next year. I will win it. But it's, I know it sounds like not a feat test. I'm a realist as well as an optimist. Can you be that? I don't know. But I give myself two years because I just I don't want to shut the door after it and go, oh, I didn't make it and I'm 35. and <sighs> That don't mean nothing in this sport, mate. Mm. Like, Brian Shaw proves it. He's an absolute... For him to win his show, and i got to say, with all the shit that people give him about his show, winning his own show, the strongest man still won is as simple as that. Mm. He beat everybody on reps. He beat this and did that. So, yeah, if Brian Shaw's going to watch this, I mean, um, like he was an absolute... That's the biggest I've seen him. Like, he's big. Scary big. Like, he yeah. put on these... See the deadlift? He put on the, the trousers. It made him look bigger. I was like, how have you got bigger by putting trousers on? I was like, good God, man. Like, But that's, like, that is testament to who he is. Yeah. Like, I, I said in an interview that we have to pull this up that Brian Shaw would win. Like, Sorry, no, you guys. Um, the Brian Shaw, like, media guys, I said he would win. Because I'm not sure what I heard it on. Maybe it's a, like a wildlife show. A lion is almost, is always, is the most fiercest at its end. So when they're about to get, you know, because he was retiring, they're always they're like the most savage at their end. He looked like a beast, mate. Nobody was beating him. Yeah, Tom did amazing to win, like, yeah. five events back to back, but unfortunately the log cost him. He didn't get any reps, but you have to roll the dice. But um, It's that consistency against across the board, right? That one, yeah, one I event. I don't think I don't think he won an event, Brian Shaw. <laughs> but he was just like, top three, top three, top three, second, second, second. It was just like, with the accumulating points, because the guy who wins... Like, because Evan, Tom Evans won the chess press, but then didn't do too well on the other events. So he was mm-hmm. top, and then just went, like, ah. And then Brian was just like, bang, 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 And then got, the, like, the power stairs and the fingers, fingers. It was just, like, almost participation for him. I was like, <laughs> um, but... I was talking to Nick Best, sorry. And, and Nick obviously trains your great guy. You guys went shooting yesterday. Amazing. Um, Nick is such a gentle giant, isn't he? But he was telling me that um, fresh off the press, he, he drove up to uh, Colorado to help out uh, with uh, yeah. Brian. Um, and have you seen his car? He's got this mini. I don't know how the hell he gets in there. Can you no, imagine? I haven't seen his car. He's got no. a mini. He has a mini. So him and his training partners all collectively come to the gym in, a mini. in the mini. Nice. It, it looks like a Mr. Bean skit. Like a, um, <laughs> and and the, 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 the suspension is maxed out to its full. 100%, but anyway, yeah. Off the point, but he told me that Brian, in um, one of the last lifts, even though he, he, I think he had to get five, I believe that, on a chest press or something, that that un- incredible contraption yeah. he created, looks like Mad Max. He uh, he only had to get a certain number, and he pushed an extra two and tore his pack. Yeah, uh, we saw it on the day we went to the lake. Um, just boom, blown, just bruised, bleeding already. It was. I don't know if it's right or left. Can't remember. But yeah, that's just a, it's an absolute animal, mate. Yeah, I mean, that's how you go out. You're talking about that lion, right? Yeah, because like they're so because fe- they know. No, I'm saying, you know, I mean, it's like you know, it's just coming to an end. So he's like, "This is it. This will yeah. be the last time I deadlift, mm-hmm. competitively." But um, I said it in an interview. I said, "No one." I said, "I saw him earlier. Like, no chance. Like humongous, mate. Mm. Like in great shape, so conditioned, and at forty, I don't want to knock him for his age. Of course, Jesus Christ can't. But um." Oh, man, if he's a blueprint of a strong man. Yeah. And all like he's like one of my idols. Right? And they say never meet your idols. That's a load of shit. I yeah. met him. I still haven't asked him for a photo. I can't. Um, you asked me for one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. But we're Welsh. It's okay. Roderick, can you remember us having that photo with uh, Mr. Baywatch over here next to the pool? Yeah, he, we, we get out to the... This guy comes out to the pool with his moustache and his long mullet. <laughs> and it's just dripping off him. Like Glorious. it looked like a like a, like a a Calvin Klein, but it'll be a, a spelt with a K and ends yeah. of the C. Yeah, you know, the dreadful. The, yeah, <laughs> the Calvin Klein. Um, but he came out to the, uh, of, the, of the pool 
but all the strong men were hanging out the day that I arrived because you had that off day, right? Yes, we did. And yeah. uh, we had a little bank there. We we had a fo- little cheeky fort, and then Paddy got his hands on it and, yeah. and absolutely, mili- you know, made, m- made, made, made me into a mutant. Um, but like. one one question, and when you were talking about Brian Shaw, uh, have you got any aspirations to just get on a plane and come out and? go into Camp Shaw and be around this guy and, and truly absorb all his knowledge because you is Gav Bilton in the UK, in Wales. You're only as good as the people you are around. Yes, you can be creative. Yes, you can be motivated, but that's self-motivation. Yeah. I truly believe for me to become who I become and became, I had to jump on a plane. I had to see who the best was. I had to size up who the best was. I had to physically be in the same uh, gyms as the yeah. best of the best be- long before I even had the chance to train but when I had the chance to train this killed it in the gym I might not have been the strongest but I never got out work strength came with maturity and strength came with time and yeah. I feel like you are I think you're just so humble it's a fault and yeah, I think yeah. that if you had the opportunity to just come over to the US and spend a month and be around some of these guys just, just even if it's you know a mentality thing yeah. it will rub off on you because iron sharpens iron and you're at that cusp of truly leveling up and i can see it the fans see it all the promoters i'm friends with all say it's big gavs you but i think maybe maybe you just have to just come over here for a couple of weeks and, and just be around some of these guys just to yeah. to reassure you that man i am the best i know i can be the best We've you spoke about, about that. Yeah, we've spoke about it, haven't we? About uh, like we obviously mentioned moving. That's like a massive step. But I said I need to go somewhere where I ain't the biggest because uh, I, I, I keep knocking myself. I know about something. I go to most gyms, every gym in Britain. I'm gonna be the strongest guy there. Yeah, I'll bump into like Hexy or Bish, but still, you know, nine times out of ten, whatever. But I said, and even Simon said, you need to go to a place where you ain't the biggest, mate. He said, yeah, you'll be the strongest, but not the biggest. And if I could sort something out, maybe towards the end of the year, I would definitely come out, yeah, and see and start my camp. If Brian Shaw would speak to Brian Shaw about it and just go yeah. and train with him and be like, like you said, be around. Like, that's an amazing saying, iron sharpens iron. I love that. And be around Brian Shaw. You just pick up that mentality of like, he is humble, but then when you hear him talk, he is like, I'm out and the world's best. That's and, what I mean. Yeah, I love, I love, I love listening to him talk because it's like, there's that humbleness, but then someone just sort of, you know, just, you just be like, and then he's like, no, I'm four times world strongest man. I've yeah. d- it's, it's just a way, you, and then I'm like, yeah, I need it. Because I, when I say things, I go, oh, I don't want to sound big-headed. Yeah. And the boys are like, they're just like, shut up and say it. And I'm like, oh. But I'm out, I'm out this. So coming out here with some, definitely something I would love to sort out. Maybe I'll, me- uh, not maybe, I will message Brian Shaw. And if the wife would see fit, I would come out, yeah. And if you would have me, I'd stay with him. I mean, I think he's got a pretty big enough house to... Brian's uh, doing all right for himself. Yeah, he's okay. I've, I've, <laughs> yeah, I've heard stories. So, Brian, Brian's still counting the cash he made from the last show. I'm sure. Yes. Um, but listen, all all testaments and kudos and and roses to Brian. He has earned his stripes in this yes. sport. He has truly become, you know, in my eyes, a pioneer of the sport. And now, his retirement is an opportunity for you to to you know get that experience, get yeah. that knowledge, soak it up. But also, not only that, you can have maybe spending a couple of weeks here where you do one one week with Brian, one week with Evan, one week. I know the boys would love to have you around, you know, because you're bringing your strength to them too. It's like, listen, this is not just a one-way street. If, yeah. if yeah. you're t- walking yeah. into the gym, they're looking at you, it's like, God, me help me out of this. Help me out yeah. with this. And then you're going like, okay, this is not my strength, but I know I can... You, you know, it goes yeah, for everything. Yeah, hand, yeah. Str- hand grips. You know, you talk about tack earlier. All these small little things yeah. that you don't get from being in Wales, that you get from being around the best of the best, is is kind of where I feel that you will pick up points, pick up seconds, pick up whatever, just coming over you for a couple of weeks. Yeah, definitely. That will get sorted. You know, I just I, I just made something happen. You, I don't know. I've just yeah. I've just given some some advice, but anyways. No, yeah, but I'll get back and um. Yeah, we fly out tomorrow in the evening, land Wednesday. I'll message Brian Shaw. I know there's a time difference, but I will get something sorted. Because oh like, man. could just be a month. At yeah. the end of the year, nothing happening. I finish, finish that show, fly out, and just say, look, I guess I travel around. They don't know, they don't live that far from each other either. No, no. And I love the trucks up. Yeah, I'd hire a truck and um, be 
Yeah, it'd be tough, but we've we've done worse things. So I don't think uh, America is going to be uh, you know tough on you. That's for sure. No, I think okay. you might be tough on America, but yeah, I'll be okay. You know, but uh, anyway, Gav, we have we have talked your your year off, and um, I truly want to say thank you for for jumping in on on some studio time here today. And, it's been amazing. And, thank um, you. Just uh, talking about your story, getting getting you out to a newer audience, and and you know for for my audience now to start leaning into you and seeing what the the, the remaining part of the year brings, and, and yeah. I'm I'm excited. Obviously, I've said it many times today. You know, selfishly, I see you flying the flag, and you gotta. You know, I, I said also like uh, Big Av is like the Chris Bumstead of uh, <laughs> of strongman. Good looking with the mustache and the mullet going on, yeah. Um, so it's now, a trend. Yeah, yeah. so like you are the trendsetter. I haven't seen anybody else with that mustache and mullet. No, in, mate. In, can't, in can't put it off, can they? So, no, no, I know. Mate. And you got the the shades too, which is kind of your brand. Yeah, Pit Vipers, they're amazing, mate. Yeah, yeah we got to get you a sponsorship now. You can't be promoting Pit Viper without <laughs> Pit Viper promoting your pocket. Okay, <laughs> yeah. a little inside tip from Flex Lewis. But thank you um, very much. Great to have you here, my friend, and, and always this is a, a second home for you guys Thank when you're so here much. in Vegas, and um, I know that you guys leave out late tonight, right, to get back to sunny Wales, to yeah. back to Area 51. Oh. Yeah, that's my, my, gym, my home gym, yes. Yep. And uh, and, the, and then the work begins. Yeah, back to it, I've had a week off, um, literally done nothing. I had one session in the hotel gym, just to get a pump on, that was it. You broke everything probably but the last. Yeah, the dumbbells, I, went up like, I think it was 50 pounds, I was like, oh, God. Oh God, my warm up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Anyways, it was it, great. Thank you. Yeah. Do you want to um, anything you want to sign off on and promote, talk about before we we land the plane for the podcast? Gav, the the floor is yours. Don't be Mr. Humble Pie. No, no, no. You can talk. Thank your sponsors. Thank whoever you want to do. This is your platform. Go ahead, my yes, friend. Yes, just like to thank my sponsors, Silverback. Thank you very much, Dale, my coach, an amazing coach. Oh, yep, there we are. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Dale, you're an amazing bloke. Thank you very much. Simon Hammett, you're a legend. Thank you, mate, for looking after me and keeping my uh, head cool. And for the past couple of months, you've been a uh, lifeline. Thank you to my wife. She's over there. Just thank you very much. I love you loads. Come in the shot, Gemma. Come and say hello. Come on, yes, get in. Yes, Go, yes. On. Go on. Go on. You only do this for the Welsh. Uh, give the camera away. Say, say hello. Right, bugger off, you've done. Yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. <laughs> Are you only even in? You only even in. Come on, stick it, you gotta bug, duck down a little bit. Duck down. There we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we got it. Get down. There we go. Ah, she's in the frame. It's all Perfect. good. And then also, um, yeah, if you want to see more content, just give me a follow. Gavin the Bull built on Instagram. Yeah, and uh, new merchandise coming soon. But Yeah. Um, so new merch is dropping soon yes, on yeah. the website, which is yeah, what? Yeah, so we're building the website. So obviously just the link will be put on my page, on yep. the Instagram page. Uh, it's getting sorted this week. The guys who I work with are, are great guys at Cloud Galactico. Um, they'll be fixing that for me. So, yeah, new merchandise. Because I just usually sell it through my Instagram, but that was just getting a mess because so many orders. But the, the shop will be launched with the new merchandise by the end of this week, or if not, like early next week, because obviously... If something happens, but it should be done, yeah, very soon. And you're also going to be putting more content on the YouTube page, right? Yeah, YouTube. Uh, we had a st- step with that due to what we spoke about earlier, but um, yeah, it would be like we got loads of stuff filmed and chopped up and ready to go. So literally, when I get home, um, it will be it'll be done straight away. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually get some uh, extra footage uh, out. You know, since you're, you're at the Dragons Lair, you, Gemma, you listening? You cannot get come all the way to the Dragons Lair and not have any Q and A. With the dragons laying the back, so we'll we'll put a little Q and A questions together with the with the dragons laying the back, and then oh, you can put that on your YouTube in the, in the future. That is amazing, thank you very much. Of course, my man. Thank so, big Gav built in the bull. Signing out, Flex Lewis, straight over there. We appreciate you guys. Link, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll be back with big guests, not bigger than Gav. I don't think. No figuratively but uh, in the next couple of episodes guys we're, we've got a lot of com- things coming down the pipeline I want to thank you as I said for all the support season 2 has begun and I can't do it without you and I appreciate you so much Flex Lewis out